Mecca. So he was there for one year before me, and he purchased it uh, in the in the um, uh, Ma'arad or in the the, the bookstore, uh, and it was no longer there. And I'm like, oh my God, you have this book? Because everybody knew I love the Sirah. You have this book, Mashallah, Tabarakallah. I've been looking at it for years. I haven't found it. You know, I'm I, I, I'm positively jealous of you, Mashallah. You know the way we say this among students. You know what he said to me? He said, take it. And I I didn't. I thought he's joking because no person of knowledge gives a rare book to somebody. Uh, no. And I'm telling you from now, guys, now I'm not going to give any of my books to anybody. I'm just telling you from now. But he just said, take it. I said, wait, what? Are you serious? Like, are you serious? You're going to give me a prized edition of one of the most important source books of Sirah and you'll just give it to me? He goes, yeah, take it. You know what he said? He said, I know. I know you're going to benefit from this more than me. So take it. That level of humility, man, and it's true, I did read the book. I gave a whole seerah lecture, you know what I'm saying? That level of humility, man, subhanAllah, that's rare. And every sheikh knows this. Every person who owns books knows this, you know? To say to somebody, I know you're going to read the book and benefit more than me. My God, what level of, of genuine concern and care. And only a person of knowledge who loves books will, will understand that, you know? Uh, another incident I remember, subhanAllah, and again, it shows you the, you know, the the... The love that this brother had, you know, for the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that when Al Maghrib started, we became the most successful, you know, institute. Alhamdulillah, you know, we were we were number one, and I think we remain number one, you know, for uh, the longest time. And then another institute popped up. Okay, another institute popped up, and it began replicating everything we were doing. Everything, you know, is the same types of binders, the same types of marketing, you know, and it was like hurting our sales you know our uh, uh business model and so we had a a, a shura meeting we had a board meeting you know all of us senior guys flew in we have an annual meeting try to figure out tactics and this was a major problem in that year this was a major what do we do with this other institute you know that is hurting our institute in the same cities there's a number of cities also bringing its its teachers and doing the same thing and it's going to be a business competition and our business manager which again we expect from the, our business manager he was furious you know this is outright you know unethical and they're just copying us and they're you know they're doing things that we're all muslims together and they know exactly what you know they need to do to hurt us and they're doing this etc and he was obviously very angry and legitimately so and i was silent because obviously you know i i had my own perspective which I was very happy that Sheikh Muhammad got to this point, but subhanAllah, I'm not in charge of, you know, Muhammad Sharif's president, you know? I'm not in charge of it. It's like, uh, I'm not the one who's going to make the final decision. You know what Muhammad Sharif said? And there are, you know, the people that are in the meeting, they're still alive, they know exactly, you know, what, what he said. He said, subhanAllah, he said, you know, I don't have a problem with Muslims competing with other Muslims if the ummah benefits. And I think that this competition is healthy because more people will come to cl attend classes and because the both of us are going to have to raise our bar to attract more students. Subhanallah. Wallahi, when I heard this, I said, I love that this guy is our leader, our president. This is the guy that needs to be in charge because the concern is not the business. The concern is not the institute. The concern is the ummah. And that was my own I wasn't, you know, I wasn't Nick taking this as a big deal because as well, I also, inshallah, wanted that. But when Muhammad is the president of Al-Maghrib, you know, as the one who's going to have the, the final say. And for him to say this, I said, Ma Alhamdulillah, I am so happy that he's in charge and I'm, I'm going to be a team player, you know, behind him as long as I live. That spirit of bringing the entire ummah together and wanting to raise the bar, that really shows you, you know, the type of, of, of mentality and person that he was. And, you know, in my entire, you know, 25 plus years of knowing him, actually more than 25, uh, 27 years, subhanAllah, 27 years. In my entire 27 years of associating with him, interacting with him, you know, never once, never once did I hear him say something bad about another Muslim. Not once. He was not of that type at all. And every time you would meet him, the warm smile, the genuine smile that would come, you know, the the, the barely hug that he would give, you know, uh, the du'as that would come. any you know, these types of things, subhanAllah, you know, you cannot replicate them. And as I said in my in my khatira as well, you know, appreciate those whom you have in your life before it's too late. Because honestly, wallahi, I'll be honest, I did not appreciate Muhammad the way that I should have. Allah, Allah forgive me. I did not realize. I mean, you don't think he's going to leave, you know what I'm saying? And you just don't think you're not going to have a, a contact with him, you know? So, I mean, you don't really... Be, be in touch as much as you should, you know, because 
because you don't think that it's not going to be possible one day, right? He's your he's your age, isn't it? You know, he's your age, and you you think halas is going to last anyway. We have plenty of years ahead. And um, I looked up the last message that he sent me, and it kind of sent me down a very difficult path because he reached. It was a difficult time because I was getting a lot of um, a lot of flag online as I usually do a lot of time. And he sent me a text message, and he goes, "If you need to talk to anybody, I'm here for you, bro." If you need to talk to anybody, I'm here for you. That was him. That was him just being behind the scenes and wanting to see you flourish, not take any credit for it, man. Um, another incident, man, there's so many that's just coming back to me. I apologize if it's un. un I, this isn't scripted, brothers or sisters. I don't know um, the next days I'm going to say. I'm just saying things that I remember. Um, what, one incident as well, subhanAllah. Some of you attended Ilm Summit, right? Remember our premier program, Ilm Summit, right? We had that so many years. Five, six, seven years. I don't know how many years we had it. I remember uh, 2007, I think it was, 2008. Uh, we visited, I visited him in Canada. And I was just like, you know, frustrated at uh, the fact that we don't have higher level classes, you know? Like I was frustrated that we're not doing, we're not reaching our, our potential and we should, this these weekend seminars is great, but we need something, you know, more advanced than this, you know? We need something more advanced than this. So he said, what do you have in mind? I said, man, look, we're the premier institute. We have so many thousands of students. Why don't we have an intensive, you know, uh, two week just retreat where people apply and, you know, they're going to do. Uh, so I had a, a preliminary vision of, of Ilm Summit. You know what he said? Literally on that dinner table and our business manager is there, you know, he knows it. on that dinner table. He goes, Khalas, it's yours this year. You do it. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, Khalas, whatever resources you need, you do it. Take charge and we'll help you and it'll, it'll be done. The, the way that he would empower you right then and there, like it's your vision, go with it. And we did it. And it was a massive success. And we kept on doing it year after year. I did it. I said, I can't. I'm not, I don't know how to. Because don't worry, you just you just do you and we'll help you from the back. We'll we'll get it done. Whatever advertising, you do you, you get the curriculum, you get the people. And that's what Muhammad Sharif was, you know. He was not a high powered level, you know, alim and technic. No, he was a nation builder. That was his title. He was a behind the scenes mover and shaker. He would see your talents and he would recognize that maybe those talents in your field are better than his talents, but his talents were better than yours and what he's doing. And he would then empower you and he would give you the infrastructure and tell you what needs to be done. You know, he taught me what I said uh, about broadening my horizons, about understanding that if we want Islam to flourish in this land, we cannot be that type of old school. You know, he was never sectarian minded. He was never, you know, uh, that type of narrow framework. He wanted the khair for the ummah. And associating with him and being with him, it really impacted me beyond. Like, I didn't realize that at the time. As I said, you don't appreciate the people when they're there in your life. You only look back and you're like, wow, you know, what an impact that he had on me. But subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, we can go on and on. But I think the least, yani, the haq that he has over us. And inshallah, the sadaqa jari of you know, all of the institutes will continue for, for a long time. Because I have no doubt in my mind, I have no doubt that much of the da'wah that you see, Allah knows how much of it is linked to how uh, Shaykh Muhammad Sharif revolutionized. Allah knows yani, it's, it's, it, all of that, inshallah, is in his mizan hasanat. He was a brother, nahsibuhu, yani, kadari, that he was sincere for the sake of Allah. He didn't want the limelight, you know? You guys knew of me and others more than you knew of him. You know why? Because he empowered us. He put us into the limelight because he realized we have a role to play and he facilitated us to get to that role. He facilitated us to build that infrastructure. Never before in Western history had so many du'at and ulama of different backgrounds come together on one platform. That's what made Al-Maghrib so strong. You know what was the glue that we needed? We needed Muhammad Sharif. You know what was that mover and shaker uh, under whom we could all cooperate and come on, on together? It was the visionary known as Muhammad Sharif. And I cannot imagine that happening without somebody like him. He touched out, he touched every one of us and reached out to every one of us and he saw talents in every one of us and he realized that when we pooled our talents together, what we would get is greater than the sum of the total. That's what Muhammad Sharif was, the visionary, truly the visionary that we now appreciate and understand. And I, I don't want to say any more because I, I think enough inshallah has been said. And, and just we ask Allah for, for, for maghfirah. We ask Allah Azza wa to raise his ranks, to forgive his sins. We ask Allah for our, our own, forgive our own shortcomings as well. And one thing that has really caused me to do as well is to reanalyze a lot of friends in my life and a lot of people in my life and to make sure that 
uh, were in touch with them. I reached out to a lot of uh, friends uh, um, and colleagues from the old school, you know, from back in my day, and just make sure that we're in touch because the suddenness um, of his demise is what really shook so many of us, just subhanAllah, just like that. And it's a wake-up call that uh, death is not something that is predictable. It's a wake-up call that we are all... Uh, Everything is already preordained. When the time comes, you cannot move it up, you cannot move it down. So we just have to prepare for that day, every one of us, and make sure that Allah takes us back when He is happy and pleased with us. We ask Allah to forgive our sins. We ask Allah to conceal our faults from the eyes of others. We ask Allah to exalt our ranks and to forgive our brother Muhammad Sharif and to grant him the best in for those. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him, to grant him, to grant him the best in the Darain, to grant him the best in the Qabr, to make his Qabr a vast place, to make his Qabr a place of light. We ask Allah Azza wa that he's able to see his place in Jannah from the Qabr and the fragrance of Jannah and the smell of Jannah and the lights of Jannah and the, and the visions of Jannah are being shown to him right now. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him peace and sakina in this place of the barzakh. We ask Allah Azza wa to give peace to his wife and to his children. We ask Allah Azza wa to fill their hearts with sabr and with iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow his children to grow up to be shining legacies to the ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant sabr to his wife and to make her iman strong and to give her the sweetness of faith, the sweetness that will allow her to overcome the difficulties of this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the good that Muhammad Sharif has done and to forgive the mistakes that he has done. We ask Allah to exalt his ranks and to resurrect him in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be reunited with him in Jannat wa Firdaus al-A'la. We ask Allah azza wa for every good of this world and we seek refuge from every evil of this world. Wazakumullahu khairan brothers and sisters. And I apologize if my thoughts were disjointed but wallahi I didn't have anything prepared. It's just literally impromptu from, from the heart so I do apologize for my Talks are usually not just disjointed. No, Jazakallah Khair Shaykh Yasser, please don't apologize. Um, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of everyone. We really appreciated you sharing those personal experiences. And I, and I think I speak on behalf of everyone. Um, I'm so glad Shaykh Muhammad never stopped pestering you because we would not have had Shaykh Yasser Ghadi part of Al Maghrib. So Jazakallah Khair. Wallahi, I said no to him in the email, literally. I said, I, I wish you the best, but that's not me. And he called me up literally as soon as I sent the email within five minutes. He called me up, and the rest, as they say, is history. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. And, and, you know, Sheikh Yasser, as you were speaking as well, I know many people commenting in the chat that, um, you know, we're, we're evaluating, right? We need to evaluate, inshallah, the people that in our lives that maybe we take granted for and we didn't express and don't express enough. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a reminder for us to reach out um, and mend our hearts and, you know, maybe mend some relationships that we, we've been distant from. Jazakallah khair. If we're going to, inshallah, um, invite... Sheikh uh, Walid Abdul Hakim, who's um, also a good friend of Sheikh Mohammed's, and mashallah, they've had many beautiful experiences and traveled together. So I'm really excited to hear from Sheikh Walid. Welcome, and Jazakallah for being with us, Sheikh Walid, and sharing a few words. Assalamu Sister Razia, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone who's listening. I pray you're doing well, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Uh, so Sheikh, Allah, I don't see your video. I just want to make sure because I want to. Uh, the video. Um, I, I I'm on video, but I'm not sure. I think you have to change the speaker or something. Um. Yep. Yeah, one second. I'm just gonna make sure so that we can see you. Sorry, guys. Give me a sec while we just make sure. Let me just make sure that. Um, so just bear with us. If the system, mashallah, there's so many people on. So uh, we're just setting up so we can have Sheikh Wadid and you're able to, inshallah, see him. There's, alhamdulillah, so many of you that are joining us. And I think that's going down the system. There we go, alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Wadid. There you are. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister Razia. I pray inshallah everyone is doing well. Jazakallah khairan for hosting me uh, to speak about my dear friend Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. And subhanAllah, this will be difficult. Uh, it's difficult for all of us, but subhanAllah, I'm 
since the news, I'm averaging about three hours a day of sleep. Yani, short naps adding up. Uh, please forgive me if I'm not very focused. SubhanAllah, just like Sheikh Yasser. Uh, SubhanAllah, I really enjoyed uh, what he spoke about, the uh, Medina era and being close to Sheikh Muhammad, because that's an era that I personally did not witness. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad is uh, more senior than me, mashallah. He's a 70s generation and I'm an 80s generation. So I was not with him in Medina and I did not witness that. But I, uh, we became very close together in the last six years of his life. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad was, uh, I mean, many of you know that I was uh, teaching from Maghrib uh, before my PhD, I got caught up and subhanAllah, uh, he used to follow and comment on my travels around the world on my page. And then one day he messaged me and he said he wanted to join me. And I was in Norway at that time. He said that every time he see a beautiful postcard or a background or something and he checks it, it turns out that it was in Norway. And I lived in Norway. I was an imam at that time. And he said, I want to come and travel with you. So I told him, Sheikh, you are more than welcome. Bismillah. And it was that trip that we went around the entire country together that brought us closer than ever before. Before we were just colleagues who were teaching together, talking about ilm together in Al-Maghrib and, and so on. But this made us closest friends possible, subhanAllah. I mean, if any of you are familiar with the Myers-Briggs test, uh, Sheikh Yasser was talking about how Sheikh Mohammed's personality is completely different from him. But... Me and Sheikh Mohammed are both INTJs. We're almost identical in the way we process information. We look at the world. We think about the world. And that brought us extremely close together, subhanAllah, that our hobbies are the same, our way of uh, exchanging things. And, and to be close to Sheikh Mohammed is something really special, really, because those who know him know he's one of the most introverted people you could ever meet. And I'm the same, by the way, subhanAllah. And you might you might uh, be surprised, they say, but he was engaging with everyone. Yes, he did this for the sake of the da'wah because he cared about pushing Islamic education so much. But in his personal life, there was almost like a wall and he would only allow very few people to come near him. And I was fortunate by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing to be one of those few. And subhanAllah, I mean, to the point that if you were to give me any date in the last six years, I could have looked up on my phone and tell you what Sheikh Muhammad was eating on that day because we were even exchanging what we're having, uh, what food we were having and having comments about that and, and what he's watching and what he's doing and what he's seeing. And, and to do this on a daily basis, I mean, Sheikh Muhammad, subhanAllah, even, even uh, like I, one, many times when I come back from Fajr, I text him and I expect that he would, uh, reply to me, you know, I would wake up uh, in the morning and I would see a reply, but he would reply to me at like 4 or 5 a.m. And then our conversation would go on until like 7 a.m. And it became almost like a habit that we have these after Fajr talks every morning. SubhanAllah, we're almost on the same, uh, same time zone. He's in Dubai and I'm in Istanbul. And that was really a, a privilege to get close to him on that level. And SubhanAllah, uh got got to witness the most beautiful last years in his life and and you know subhanallah and i always say this if you really want to bring your relationship to the next level with anyone travel with them visiting people you may visit them for two or three hours you may spend a, a day with them if you live in the same city but traveling with someone for an extended period of time this is the ultimate way of developing your bond Fa um, I'm remembering now, subhanAllah, the last trip I had very recently with Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, one of the last few people he, he has met in his life, subhanAllah. And I was speaking to him on the same day that he passed away, that when people started to message me, I said, oh, it must be a rumor. I was just talking to him a couple of hours ago. Until, subhanAllah, I confirmed it from, from all the sources near him. It was something unbelievable. And I'll tell you even, subhanAllah, that even after everyone is posting about it, I still wake up the next day and I message him because I'm still I'm still not comprehending that it happened. I mean, on the last day, and just to let you know how kind he is, Sheikh Muhammad subhanAllah, on the last day in Dubai, I wasn't sure how to get back to 
my, my hotel when I was there. And, and Sheikh Mohammed decided to walk with me three kilometers, uh, like almost near midnight, until he gets me to the closest metro station so that I could go back to my hotel. And that's when I hugged him very hard, harder than ever before, subhanAllah. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to him uh, like to spend the final uh, final days together. Uh, you know, since COVID, we always made it a habit uh, after that trip to Norway, we traveled very frequently together, subhanAllah. I checked one of those uh, apps uh, that you organize your images in, and it said we've been to 87 cities together in just those last six years, subhanAllah. And and for, for and then after COVID, of course, no one could travel. And subhanAllah, it's as if uh, one day I'm checking flights to Dubai and I find I'm, I'm in Europe like six hours away and I find the, uh, like a deal, just $30 to Dubai. And I'm thinking about this now that Allah wanted to send me to him because, because I wasn't thinking about it at that time. I wanted to visit him and meet him. I actually wanted him to come visit me in Istanbul. But it's as if Allah showed me this deal so I could go spend the last few days with him, subhanAllah. And we went around the seven Emirates and we bonded together and we opened our hearts to each other like never before, subhanAllah, about everything personal and about life and about uh, the, the matters of the ummah and everything, subhanAllah. So I always say you never know. You never know when is the last time you're going to be with someone. Always treat every time you are with someone you love, always treat it as if it could be the last time. And, and I shared a message I, with him from WhatsApp yesterday. I said, Sheikh, life is very short. Wallahi, I will miss you so much. And I always make sure to tell the people that I love that I really love them because it may be the last time you tell them. And I, and I lost I lost my dear father, Rahmatullahi Ali, about two years ago. And I've never felt so much pain since, I, since I've lost my father. Almost equal to the pain, I've lost my father. So you could just imagine... How Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif means to me, subhanAllah. Um, I just wanted you to know that from the beginning, it wasn't like that with him. You know, the, fir the very first time I met him was in 2005 when he was just about to open Al-Maghrib in Toronto. And it was a conference that I was also invited to. And I saw this very young, ambitious man. He's standing on the booth, uh, Al-Maghrib booth himself, handing out flyers very humbly subhanallah like whatever it takes for people to learn knowledge he would do it himself if he has to and 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 i remember he handed me a flyer personally and that was my first al maghrib experience when i when i attended the course in toronto and just like anyone else even though subhanallah i i i've studied i've studied the um, in riyadh and graduated from islamic university but once I attended Al Maghrib as a student, I felt the Iman rush and the sweetness of Iman, like all of you, I'm sure each and every one of you remembers your first class in Al Maghrib, subhanAllah. And that's when that's when I approached him and said, Sheikh, I would love, I would really, really, really love to come and teach with you in Al Maghrib. And you know, subhanAllah, what he said to me, he said to me that you're not ready yet. And you know, uh, I was I was very young, and my self esteem was very low at that time. And these words kind of hurted me, you know. And that was the first interaction I I, I had with him, like talking with him, Subhanallah. But it was actually the best gift he gave me in my life, because after he said this to me, I woke up the next day and said, "Okay, Inshallah." I am going to open my own Ilm Path Academy and whatever, whatever Al Maghrib does, I will try to do even better, inshallah. Subhanallah. That was my ambition. And that's what his words, it hurted me, but it's almost like, and, and everyone who knows Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, he sometimes gives you very direct advice. And that advice may hurt you a bit, but it's almost like medicine. You know, when you take medicine, you may not like the taste, you may have side effects, but this medicine eventually will make you better. And that's exactly what happened. So I was like, okay, what's Al Maghrib doing? They have a nice website. I'm going to learn. I couldn't afford to get someone make websites. I'm going to learn how to make websites myself. Look at their posters. They're beautiful. I'll try to make even more beautiful posters. And I spent a year trying to learn every single skill uh, I needed 
in order to launch my first course. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, after about a year, I launched the, the Fiqh of Death. And subhanAllah, when I saw like over 500 students come to my very first class, and I was very unknown at that time, I said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, may Allah reward him for his rejection. And that's when they uh, contacted me and said, you know, we would love for you to teach that, that same course, Fiqh of Death, with Al Maghrib. So that was actually my first course with Al Maghrib Institute. And subhanAllah, now that we're talking about his death, I could only see about uh, the first course, was, my first course was Fiqh of Death, that I was teaching a 40 hour double weekend course about death and even teaching my students about how to grieve. And 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 now, when, when, when Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullah alayhi died, whatever I taught, I I had a difficulty using myself. It's very different when you're teaching others about what to do when someone dies in your family and when it happens to someone very close to you. SubhanAllah, many of us who are rational may become very emotional and very irrational and may forget even what we teach, SubhanAllah. But, but that's the barakah of knowledge is that you may be shaken for a moment, but whatever you learned come back, it come, comes back and benefits you. And that's when I say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that he made us learn this legacy. I tried to really fly because I wanted to be the one who washes him. You know, subhanAllah, uh, this poor servant of Allah is the one who who taught many Al-Maghrib students around the world how to wash a body. And I said, because he gave me that opportunity after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only befitting that I go and try to wash him. But the earliest flight to arrive in Dubai was 7 p.m. It was after he was going to be buried. So I said, Qaddal Allahu ma sha'afa'al. And inshallah, our next meeting. Sorry, I don't know that one. Inshallah, in our next meeting, uh, is not he was supposed to come and stay with me in my home in Istanbul in August, in August subhanAllah. But I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that the next meeting we have, inshallah, if Allah accepts us, will be in a much better place than Dubai and Istanbul and any other place in the world. For that was the first encounter. And after that, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the chance to teach with Al-Maghrib, I was attending with him the course, uh, many of you know about it, Nietzsche Hero, where he was going through the process of how, how you, uh, training leaders, how to take their projects to fruition. And I remember he asked me, uh, because I was still trying to figure out uh, what else to teach with Al-Maghrib. He said, what is the niche you want to focus on? You know, the course is called Niche Hero. I said, Sheikh, well, hey, uh, you're asking me, just like asking a parent to choose who is his favorite son or daughter. I love Quran science. I love tafsir. I love hadith. I love fiqh. I can't choose. I really want to teach everything because everything has the sweetness of knowledge. And then he said to me, you know, you may be able to do that, but if you, if you really want to be the top in what you do, you have to choose one thing and focus on it. You have to be known for that one thing and you have to own that category that when people mention that subject, they mention your name. And when they mention your name, they remember that subject. That was the concrete advice he gave me. And at that time, I said, I, I don't think I'm, the, I'm this type of person, subhanAllah. And, and, and I maybe was a bit stubborn because I wanted to teach everything. But subhanAllah, it turned out after a year or two that he was right. That uh, I didn't know how to choose my niche, but sometimes you try and Allah is the one who chooses for you. So I was traveling around the world and I didn't just want to share travel photos. I wanted to add value to it. He taught me this in the course that, you know, when you, when you share something with people, it must have value for them. If you're just talking about yourself, or your travel, then this is not going to benefit anyone. It's not going to spread among people. So I always try to add the value by speaking about the history and Islamic history and different types of, of things I learned as I travel. Until subhanAllah, uh, Allah put me in that path and I became uh, uh, known and synonymous with history. Until when he traveled with me and we went around Norway and I was showing him places and taking him to places, he said to me something very beautiful. And that's what I said, that sometimes he may be, his advice may be strong and direct and it may hurt you. But he also 
tells you things that motivate you to, to feel great about yourself and to feel that you could become the best version of yourself. He said to me, Sheikh, this was, this was the best trip I had in my life and you were the best guide I ever had. Why are you doing this only with me? Why don't you go and guide other people and make your own tours and take people around the world and teach them about Islamic history? And after that trip, subhanAllah, I followed his advice and I started to make the Andalusia tours and the Ottoman tours and, and Bosnia and others. And it was all after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his advice. And whatever I learned, whatever I saw in Al-Maghrib, the excellence in Al-Maghrib. So when I was young, I was just trying to copy Al-Maghrib. But you know, when you copy something, you will never be as good as the original. So instead of that, I took the excellence of Al-Maghrib and, try, and, and what I learned from Sheikh Muhammad and tried to apply to the travel industry and tours. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me that blessing and I went and I thanked him in person. And since then, we've always been traveling together, Germany, Luxembourg, France, Japan, all these bonding experiences that we had together with Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. And, 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 and in the last years of his life, subhanAllah, that he was more into personal development and developing people. He said, Alhamdulillah, I have developed an institute for people who could teach Islamic studies even better than I do. But I want to be, as his email, everyone knows it, nation builder. And indeed, he is someone who has built a nation. That uh, Now we've seen that everyone only had positive things to say about him. He built me. He built many of the teachers of Al-Maghrib. He brought the best out of them. And inshallah, we all want to continue his legacy and bring out the best in each and every one of us. And that's the best way we could honor his legacy. And as he always said, give your excuses a black eye and go and ride above the tide. This was actually the last words of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif that now the world is going through difficulties, financial difficulties, the gasoline, the, the health, all these things. And as a believer, we need to work harder and rise above the tide so that inshallah, that's the best embodiment we could do. You could see today, I already used up all my tears in the first two days. And subhanAllah, now I'm actually smiling because now I feel when I, when I saw all his students and getting together and honoring his legacy that Sheikh Muhammad did not leave. He may his his soul and body may have left, but his teachings have have stayed with us and they will stay with us, inshallah. And I and I personally made it to increase his ranks in Jannah, inshallah. I just re-downloaded every single lecture he's ever made, audio or YouTube, or all the Discover You courses that I signed up to, and some of them I haven't even started yet, but I just made a I just made my intention to always sign up for them in the past that now i'm just listening to them morning and night because I, I i feel that he could he will always be with me and he will always advise me i wish he stayed with me until i got old allah knows best how long each of us live but but someone as the prophet said if the son of adam dies all his deeds were cut off except for for, for three jariya a continuous charity and we've seen subhanallah all the efforts that al-maghrib has done in the non-profit as well and a knowledge that he has left behind that benefits everyone Masha Allah, the children of sheikh muhammad that i that i met from young children until until they are now adults and they've memorized the quran from a very young age of seven may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless them these beautiful children and we are all in some way his 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 uh, his children subhanallah that not only his children from from him but we are all like pe people who will inshallah continue his legacy and continue on the same path that he taught us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make every every deed that i do in his scale and all the deeds that we do as his students in his scale and as his and his uh, his colleagues as well may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise his ranks higher than if you, if you saw the picture of his grave it was burj khalifa behind it you know the tallest building in the world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
elevate his ranks in Jannah higher and higher than, than thousands and millions of Burj Khalifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, his teachings uh, benefit not only our generation, but the generation after it. And we will see, subhanAllah, his impact how of, of, of Islam. And I didn't talk about this much. Uh, I don't need to actually talk about it. We all know his impact around the world, not only the Western world, but now, subhanAllah, even in other languages, in non-English countries, in Arab countries, they are also now starting to follow Al-Maghrib model in teaching. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullah khairan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Jazakallahu khair, Dr. Walid, for sharing such beautiful uh, stories and lessons. Alhamdulillah, we have, you know, mashallah, so many of the Al-Maghrib presenters who want to share their love of obviously Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and there's a um, journey, their experience, a relationship with him, the reminders. So we're going to have Shaykh uh, Saad Taslim next, inshallah. So Shaykh Saad is with us and he's also an instructor with al Maghrib Institute. Um, and you know, it's kind of nice to see we had Shaykh Yasser who's there, you know, from almost the beginning. Shaykh Saad was someone who came in in some of the later years. So welcome Shaykh Saad. Looking forward to, um, you know, hearing your experience and stories with Shaykh Muhammad. Jazakallah khair. <coughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of tough for me to do, to speak about Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. Uh, you know, these last couple of days, uh, taking some private time for myself. And I feel a little guilty, feeling so sad uh, and so personally affected by this because I know that he meant so much to so many people. And so, you know, it's, it's for me, this is very personal. And I know he, he was such a big figure, like he impacted and touched so many different lives that I know it's not all about me, but obviously, you know, on a personal level, we feel that more than, you know, anything else. And so I just want to take a few moments um, and talk a little bit uh, about, honestly, I, like I could, I, I could write a book. I could write books about, um, everything that I've learned from Sheikh Muhammad and everything that he's taught me and, you know, the impact that he's had. Uh, I consider Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, um, my brother, obviously, a dear friend. Uh, but first, b before all of that, he was my teacher. He's my mentor. And honestly, I was thinking about this this last few days and where I am today, uh, what I'm doing today with my life and, you know, teaching and da'wah and so on and so forth. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is probably the single most figure that has has facilitated that and made that possible. Um, and that's that's who he was. Like he invested in people. And so he invested in me, subhanAllah. The whole reason I went to Medina was because he inspired me to go to Medina. Uh, and he encouraged me go, to go to Medina and to study. Uh, the whole reason I stayed in Medina, obviously after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is actually because of Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. Uh, I remember till today, subhanAllah, before I went to Medina, he said to me, he said, there's two types of people who go to Medina, University of Medina. He said, there's quitters and there's those who don't quit. And subhanAllah, for some reason, and Sheikh Muhammad, he had, Allah he had this way of getting his point across with even, like, it seems like a simple, some simple words, but he, he had this way of knowing what would have the most impact on a particular individual. And, and, you know, because I had known him for a long time, he knew what would affect me. And so he said that to me, he said, you know, you're either a quitter or you're not. And that's something you got to decide once you go to, to Medina. And I remember subhanAllah, while I was living in the dorm rooms in Medina, I actually wrote uh, on the wall in front of me, like when I would wake up from, from my bed, the wall in front of me, it said, I'm not a quitter. Because I wanted that to be a reminder for me that every day when I wake up, or I'm having a tough day. And I certainly had very, very tough days in Medina. There were days where I was ready to quit. There are days I remember, subhanAllah, that I'm like, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. Like, you know, I just, I can't take it anymore. I can't do it. And then I would look at that and I would remember that Sheikh Muhammad said, you either quit or you don't. And so I would say, you know, I'm not a quitter. You know, I'm, that's not who I am. And I won't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to leave this. So he's the reason, really, he's the reason I stayed in Medina. I, I continued to study and, and go through that whole process. He's the reason that I had uh, the means to teach and to continue to, to benefit people, inshallah, with what I learned uh, in Medina. I know a lot of Medina graduates, I know a lot of people studied in Medina who are doing other things with their lives. And I don't know if, if he hadn't hired me at Al Maghrib and, and given me the platform to be on Al Maghrib to, 
you know, have that trust and faith in me that I would be doing that today. And, and honestly, there are times even now with, you know, teaching and giving doubt, there are times where I'm like, it's so difficult. I could just live like a civilian life, right? And when I, what I mean by civilian life is, you know, a private life. I'm not teaching. I'm not, you know, I'm not out there doing stuff or whatever um, because that always seems like an, an easy way out. And I can't imagine if, if I had come back from Medina and I had no way of like teaching and, and continuing what I would have done. So subhanAllah, even after Medina. And then, you know, and then continuing to teach after Medina, he's one of those people that continue to advise me. And that's one of the things about him. He, he was never afraid to, he never shy to give me advice, even in things that I like, maybe I didn't want to hear, or he knew that were tough for me to hear. I remember days in, 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 in Mina, you know, making Hajj, uh, actually interesting, uh, fact, every single Hajj I've made in my life, I've made with Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. The very fa- first Hajj I made was before I went to Medina. Uh, me and my mom went for Hajj and Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif used to live in my community. So we went to Hajj with him. And then after that, I got accepted to Medina. And then every year he would come for Hajj. Uh, he would hit me up, he'd be like, come join our group. And he, you know, as one of the student, um, you know, leaders of, of the group, he'd, he'd have me on. And literally every single Hajj I've made in my life, I've made with uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. And I remember those private moments, those private times in Mina, because, you know, he, w- he, he was an introvert a lot like me. And so I think he understood me on a certain level. It's those private moments sitting in Mina. Uh, in the middle of the day when it's hot and all that kind of stuff, you know, just everyone else is taking a nap or everyone's out doing stuff, just sitting in, in Minna, giving me these pieces of advice about, you know, my future and what's going to come and what's going to happen. And I remember kind of even things that people may think are very small, but even he would tell me things about how to interact with the opposite gender when you're a public speaker, you know, when you're talking to a sister or this or that, you know, these, these things that you know, a lot of times people don't don't get this tarbiyah. They don't get this upbringing. They don't get those, you know, you can learn from a teacher. You can learn the knowledge and so on and so forth. But certain things you can only learn when you have a mentor, when you have somebody there personally advising you, personally telling you who's been through it, who's going through it. And they can say, you know, this is what I learned. This is what I have for you. Until this day, I, I remember those lessons. And I know for a fact that a lot of that advice that he gave me has served me till this day. And I look at, you know, some other public speakers and so on and so forth. And I, and I know that uh, maybe, maybe some of them didn't get that advice. Maybe some of them didn't have that personal mentor who said, you know, in this situation, this is how you gotta, this is how you gotta, how to, how to take care of yourself. This is how, this is how, this is what you have to do to protect your deen, to protect your faith. And like I said, a lot of these conversations, they're not comfortable conversations, but Sheikh Muhammad, you know, in those quiet moments, he would, he would share that with me, uh, Allah Hamu. And honestly, I know I, I only have five minutes to speak and my time is, is almost up. Uh, and there's so much I have to say, subhanAllah. But I just wanted to share, share that, that Sheikh Hamid Sharif, uh, he invested in people. You know, we live in a day and age where it's all about myself, right? Nefsi, nefsi. It's about, you know, when someone makes it big, it becomes all about them. You know, they, they are in the spotlight. They want the attention. They want to put themselves at the top. Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, he would... He invested in people. He saw the potential in people and he raised people up. Uh, and to me, that's a sign of, of sincerity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that it's only out of sincerity that Sheikh Muhammad wasn't like, no, this mess, it's not about me. And Sheikh Muhammad never made it about himself. Uh, it was always about the message. It was always about Islam. So he was always thinking what is best for Islam. Because he's not thinking what's, what's best for me, what will raise my profile, what will make you know, these days people talk about like your brand, your personal brand, right? You have to brand yourself and you have to get out there and get more followers and this and that or whatever. He wasn't, for him, it was what is best for Islam. And that's why he was able to even shrug off criticism. When he would get criticism and people would, and people went hard on him, subhanAllah. I know a lot of people are saying a lot of good things about Sheikh Muhammad right now because we have this legacy. You see, But when he was in the thick of it, and when he was starting Al-Maghrib, and I was there when he started Al-Maghrib, you know, his, his first seminar that he ever taught, he got a lot of backlash. Char- you know, I the not charging for a seminar, right? You're going to charge people for Islamic nod. He was working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Nahsabuhu kadharik. That's, that's, what we, that's what we understand from that. He was working for Allah, so he's able to shrug off that criticism. And that's another lesson I learned from him, that always check your intentions. Are you doing it for the sake of the people, or are you doing it for the sake of Allah? If you're doing it for the sake of people, then you're going to flip-flop as people flip-flop. You know, people's, the way people are, <laughs> people are very fickle. 
One day they love you, another day they, they don't love you. One day they'll criticize you for this, another day they'll criticize you for that. And as you know, the tides turn and as the wind blows in one direction, another direction, subhanAllah, may Allah grant us uh, sabat, may Allah make us firm, right? But if we're working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that'll keep us grounded. And so that for me is, you know, one of the big lessons um, I learned from, from Sheikh Muhammad. And, and you know, I, I have been reflecting a lot, as like I said, in the last few days. And, you know, I think about, you know, I mentioned, you know, he identified as an introvert. I identify as an introvert. And I think on a certain level, we understood each other. And I always think about the hadith of the Prophet where he said, Al-arwahu junudun mujannada. That souls are like soldiers that are constrict, constricted, constricted together. You know, they're in an army together. They're lined up together. They're, you know, they're, they, they stand with, with, with one another. That those souls that recognize one another, they, they get along. They, 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 they're good together. And even though, subhanAllah, Sheikh Muhammad, for a lot of my life, subhanAllah, in the early, t- early you know, time in, in, in me practicing Islam, I was there with him. But a lot of my life, I was actually away from him. Even the whole time I was in Medina, I would see him once a year during Hajj. And then even after graduating, you know, he moved to another part of the world. And I would see him for very short periods of time. I'd get messages from him, but it was short periods of time. But I feel like our hearts were connected. And I would always think about him, subhanAllah. And I feel like on a certain level, our souls were connected and they felt that companionship. And so what I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, uh, my dua right now is just as our hearts or connected in this life, and our souls were felt connected to one another, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our souls to be connected to one another in Jannah. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us uh, in Jannah. And I've, I've been very sad these last couple of days, subhanAllah. Um, but one of the things that has brought me solace is continually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to see him uh, in Jannah, and to be with him, to hang out with him, to chill with him in Jannah. Because that's that's what I know that, you know, what he would want as well. Just to Stay hang out in Jannah, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Zakun khair. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you that Shaykh Saad and all of us. Jazakallah khair. And you know, one of the ongoing themes we keep hearing, which is so beautiful, um, is that Shaykh Muhammad was just so focused on his mission. Um, even with the naysayers, even with criticisms, like subhanAllah, it didn't shake him from what he was trying to build. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really hold on to that um, from his legacy. So inshallah, and, uh, next we have Sheikh Navid Aziz, who also shared a few words the other day that I know I really found a lot of comfort in and just hearing his stories and experiences. Um, Sheikh Navid was also, alhamdulillah, is also an instructor with Al Maghrib and worked closely with Sheikh Hamid over the years. So um, Jazakallah Khair for being here with, here with us, Sheikh Navid. And um, you know, looking forward to she- seeing Sheikh Hamid through your eyes and the experiences that you had. Jazakallah khair, Razia. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, can so we just take a second, uh, Sheikh Navid, for your video to come on? Sure. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Razia, am I good to go? Yep, you're good. Okay, Bismillah. Um, you know, it's uh, phenomenal, subhanAllah, in uh, this incident. There's so many thoughts that you want to share, but how do you filter that out? So I want to start off with sharing a, a genuine thought, a reoccurring theme that perhaps we haven't paid attention to, <clears throat> which is the fact that, subhanAllah, so many people have been able to mention what Sheikh Muhammad has done for them. And I want us to think about how many people have stories about things that they've done for Sheikh Muhammad. How many people have stories about things that they've done for Sheikh Muhammad? And for me, that is a beautiful lesson. Because if you look at the tarbiyah that the Prophet wasallam gave to the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, telling him that even if your whip was to fall off your horse, before you ask someone to pick it up, pick it up yourself. Do things for yourself, rely upon Allah, and create for yourself. I remember recently I watched his uh, interview with uh, Muhammad Arshad. And he was talking about how growing up in Winnipeg, he was the uh, only colored kid named Muhammad. And the teacher mentioned that Muhammad was the most, po- most popular name in the world. And the kids started making fun of him. Like there's only one of him in the whole entire city, probably. And he said, I had to create my own space fitting in because that's what my childhood was like. SubhanAllah. And that motivation, like as a young kid of creating space for himself was just phenomenal. Which leads me to point number two, 
was that for those of you that attended his classes, he always said, don't aim to be the best, but aim to be from amongst the best. And initially, when you're talking about leadership, this doesn't make sense. Like leadership is about being the best, right? But he said, when you aim to be from amongst the best, you raise everyone to that level. You raise everyone to that level. And while leadership generally is a lonely position, when you aim to be amongst the best, you surround yourself with successful, like-minded people. And in this case, people that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's amazing that, you know, he understood that before he even articulated it. Because if you look at the stories of Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, Sheikh Yasir Burjas, in Medina, while he's a student, like a young kid, He's like, will you come and teach at my institute? What institute? It hasn't established yet. But he knew that he wanted these people around him because he, like, the ummah is not a one-man show, right? It's not a one-man show. It's a, it's a conglomerate. It's a collective. And he knew that, subhanAllah. The third thing I wanted to share with you was uh, Sheikh Ammar called me. Um, I, I believe it was the same day when Sheikh Mohammed passed away, just to uh, convey condolences and to talk, um, which I really appreciated. And I'm like, Sheikh Ahmad, we need to do this Sadaqah Jariya for Sheikh Mohammed. And he's like, what are you talking about? He literally laughed. I think that was the first time, you know, he laughed in the whole conversation. It was a very serious conversation. And he just laughed. He's like, what are you talking about? Al-Maghrib is his Sadaqah Jariya. And I'm like, I get that. And it's not just about benefiting the deceased. It's about those that he has left behind feeling as if they're able to contribute, feeling as if they could do something for him because everyone wants to be able to do something for Sheikh Muhammad because he's done so much for us, subhanAllah. But when I think about this, I, I, I can't help but think about the hadith that talks about, you know, ikra waratil kama kunta turatilu fid dunya. That the Sadaqa Jariya, Al-Maghrib is his Sadaqa Jariya. We are all his Sadaqa Jariya. The instructors are his Sadaqa Jariya. His kids are his Sadaqa Jariya. Like it's there. I, I, that's not the issue. The issue is from our side. We want to feel as if we can give back. And I think the best thing that we can do to give back is all the lessons that we've learned to implement in, um, in our lives. Care for the Ummah sincerely and genuinely. And that is, you know, the, the way that we honor who he was. And we increase his, his hasanat by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But going back to my point was... The envisioning that I have, and for those of you that have seen the, the picture that I shared on Facebook where he's standing like this after we won charades uh, in Manchester, you know, that celebration, like that's the vision I have of him at the gates of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, you know, enter from the gate that you want. And he's celebrating. And as he enters, he's told, Ikra waratil kama kunta turatilu fi dunya. Read and recite like you used to read, read and recite in this world. And I love Sheikh Yahya for this, that he's been sharing all these Quran recitation videos from the tour that they did in uh, Azerbaijan, that every masjid he's going to, he's just reciting Quran. And I just envision that, that the ranks are re being raised as he's reciting that Quran. So, bidhanahi ta'ala, I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be merciful and compassionate to him. And will take care of him better than any one of us could have or could have would have even wanted to. And this is what, you know, I, the point I want to conclude with is that if we want to rationalize our emotions, which I think is very important to do, because you can't just grieve in emptiness forever. Like Islam does not encourage grieving in emptiness, meaning that you just feel sad and you don't do anything about it. The point of that grief is to channel it, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to turn to Allah and to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Sheikh Muhammad used to teach us. But when we rationalize these emotions, there is grief at the loss of Sheikh Muhammad, a teacher, a friend, a mentor, a, a close confidant, a companion. All of that is there. And then on top of that, there's a layer of fear that perhaps we're not able to... To pinpoint what is that fear that who is going to replace Sheikh Muhammad? How is the Dawah going to continue? How is the Maghrib going to continue? How is Discovery going to continue? Who is going to be there to advise me? Who's going to be there to guide me? But at the end of the day, just like Sheikh Muhammad used to teach us, you have to have tawakkul in Allah. This is the deen of Allah, this is the khalq of Allah. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was always in control, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Sheikh Muhammad as a conduit to give us this nasiha, but it is the deen of Allah, it is the khalq of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that will continue to 
provide and take care and protect this deen and continue this deen and spread this deen and allow this deen to thrive and allow it to reach the east and the west every household. And that is what we have to keep remembering. That is what we have to keep remembering. So as we rationalize our emotions, grieve, but also put your trust in Allah that just like the Ummah survived the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and thrived thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his help and will send his victory as well. Mm-hmm. And Allah knows best. Jazakumullah khair for allowing me to share. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh Nabit, for being on with us and you know, Sukhan, you and so many of the instructors being so vulnerable, sharing um, you know, your emotions and grief is I know helping a lot of the students who are coping, who are going through this and, and feeling like, you know, Alhamdulillah, we're, we're in this together and we're healing and Shaykh Muhammad meant so much to all of us and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah that we're getting to have these little windows and glimpses into him. Um, so inshallah next we're going to have uh, Ustada Dania. Assalamu alaikum Ustada. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khair for being here with us and, and sharing a few words. Uh, Jazakallah khairan for hosting this uh, very um, beautiful program. Uh, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu everyone. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim the Prophet ﷺ said that أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ That the most beloved of people to Allah is the one who is the most beneficial to people. And we can see how much everyone is expressing their love for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. And in another hadith, we learned that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love someone, he puts love and acceptance for that person in the hearts of people. And this is what we are witnessing, how much people are expressing their love for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. And there is reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people. And of the reasons is when a person becomes a source of great benefit for others. And from the stories that you are, you know, that we are listening to, we can see how so many people benefited from Sheikh Muhammad in big ways, in small ways. Um, there is no interaction that you could have with Sheikh Muhammad except that you benefited from him in in one way or another. And as a woman, I can say that Sheikh Muhammad did a lot, a lot for us, uh, for, for, for women. He, first and foremost, provided us the opportunity to study our religion in ways that were not available, uh, in ways that uh, it was never done before. I remember uh, attending Al-Maghrib classes, you know, right at the beginning uh, here in Canada. And I remember people would criticize a lot that why are there men and women in one room? And I could never understand that why is this a problem? You know, finally we're getting to see the person who is teaching us because typically in a masjid setting, you know, women would be, uh, you know, in behind a wall where you don't even get to see who is talking. And if you have a question or, you know, you want some kind of clarification, there's no way that you could have access to the, the scholar. Sheikh Muhammad provided us women the opportunity to study directly from people of knowledge. And he benefited us in many different ways. I remember sitting through so many of his classes where he never ever spoke in a condescending way to women or about women. Um, He was never ever disrespectful towards women. Um, He always gave us advice in the most honest and respectful way. You could approach him, you could ask him personal questions, you could ask him, you could show him the work that you had done. He would read through it and he would give you honest feedback in the most respectful way. And uh, he basically provided us access to scholars. He, He set that trend, I believe, in North America. And not only that, he also supported female-led organizations. Um, my parents founded Al Huda International, and when they started here in Canada, Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif is the one who gave us, you know, f- full-out support 
in so many different ways from, you know, organizing fundraisers to, you know, um, coming to our institute so many times, speaking to the students, teaching us different things, providing us special access to all Al-Maghrib classes. Um, SubhanAllah, there is so much that he did, uh, you know, to support women, uh, he, but from providing us access to Islamic education, to uh, access to scholars, to supporting female-led organizations. And then uh, also, uh, I, I have to say this, giving me the opportunity to join Al-Maghrib. This is something that I could never, ever, ever have imagined. Never. Um, but subhanAllah, uh, you know, Sheikh Muhammad was always ahead of his years, as as you've been uh, listening to. Uh, he, he had a vision, uh, and he wanted the best for the ummah. He was truly a nation builder. Uh, and... Uh, and, and I feel like he benefited women in ways that many other people have not been able to. The Prophet ﷺ said that, lam nas, lam And I testify that Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif uh, definitely benefited us. And I'm very grateful to him. I'm very grateful to Allah for, um, for, uh, uh, for, giving us the opportunity to benefit from Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of his efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of his services for his deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count, uh, count him among uh, the salihin and, and join him with with the best uh, uh, of the best. I mean, Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that message because you're absolutely right. Um, you know, Sheikh Mohammed made women not feel like an afterthought when it came to our Islamic um, learning, our journey and knowledge and in the classes and the way that Alhamdulillah, you know, women were always given the opportunity to have their own Q&A time, the respect um, that was always given and the spaces that were provided. Even I know for mothers, mashallah, he would make sure there was a room for mothers um, with babies so they could still attend the classes. And, you know, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for setting that kind of standard and precedence. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And now we, inshallah, we have Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, who I know I've been closely following the beautiful videos you've been sharing. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for you know, allowing us to share those special moments. Allahi barak feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Ali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Rahman al-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-barr al-tawwab al-rahim to send his mercy, his light upon my dear brother Habibi Muhammad rahmatullahi alayhi and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has allowed us these few minutes to come in together to celebrate um, and the beautiful life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to continue to do what I know my brother Muhammad would do if he was sitting in my chair today and celebrating one of our lives, which is that he would want us to rechannel and refocus our attention to the precious few moments few hours, few days, weeks, months, or even years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still provided for us. There are so many things that I would love to share uh, about Muhammad, uh, Muhammad and his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his love for the Quran, his love for his family, his love for his children, there are so many things that I would love to share um, that maybe are not what others have experienced with him. 
but I wanted to confine myself in these two or three minutes to a particular hadith of the Prophet The Prophet said that you leave, we leave this worldly life in only one of two conditions. That you are mustarih or mustarahun min. That at the moment of your death, you are given relief and you are made content or that the world that you leave behind is relieved at your departure and it's made more content because you are no longer upon it. All of us are a testimony. Men, women, young, old, Muslim and non-Muslim to the impactful life that our brother Muhammad had in our own lives. And there is not a single person, in my heart, I do not believe that there is a single person who has a claim that can say, Alhamdulillah, he's gone from this earth. Rather, everybody, Near and far. Wallahi, I had a call from people in Japan. I was like, Japan? They said, Sheikh, we just wanted you, if you know the family, just express to us how much appreciation we have for Sheikh Muhammad, for what he did. Wallahi, yesterday, one of the you know, project managers in the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, I know even you, Sheikh Yahya, you're unaware. But he had reached out to me, reached out to the administration of the masjid, offered us support in these very technical things, in how we marketed something, in how we changed this translation. He noticed it in one of his uh, one of his days, and he said, "No, no, this is not the way you should write this." Just the the amount of people, the random amount of people who have been benefited by him, who count him as being someone, whether they knowingly or unknowingly depended on him, is phenomenal. And there's nobody, subhanAllah, that is taking any comfort in his departure from us, in his ascension into the gateways of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open them wide for him. As a part of our belief that we are testifiers, we are shuhada'ullahu fil ard. We testify that this is a man of Jannah, a man who taught people how to live a marital life until Jannah, who always focused on putting tawakkul upon Allah, who never feared for his family. Wallah, he would say, you know, Yahya, I've taught people about Islam. I've wanted people to know about Islam. I don't fear for my family, whether I'm here or not here. Allah will send them those who will look after them. You and I, we are just tools for our family. That if we are dropped, another tool will be picked up. Somebody else will be in our place. And this is, you know, subhanAllah, it gives me so much comfort, so much joy in my heart. The final thought is that my dear brother is one who I believe is not just simply detached from uh, the experiences that we have, And I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us about those who have a sudden death. The Prophet ﷺ says, you know, um, uh, the the mount of al-fajah, it's something that was just sudden. That these are all things that are a way of Allah cleansing our behaviors, cleansing our sins. And once again, Allah using our brother Muhammad as da'wah to us. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to maintain his legacy to teach in his place and to have those who are prepared to teach in our place when we are no longer with you. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him who was from a sabiqoon, you know, he was a for a forerunner, uh, an innovator, one who walked forward and blessed us with so many wonderful things that as he stepped ahead of us in his pathway to Jannah, that it's just a day. Wallahi innaha sa'a. It's but an hour that we have. So let us be pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Let us allow ourselves the dignity of catching up to those who have preceded us upon a path of, of love. It's where you understand the, the hadith of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him 
the rahma that we expect of him, the maghfira that we expect of Allah from Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the gateways of Jannah, all, all of them to be open for Muhammad, the one who fasted and recited the Quran, the one who taught the kalima, the one who led people in prayer, in taraweeh, in nafl, the one who honored and led hujjaj 20 plus years, 20 years of hajj after hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it all reason for him to be fi'iliyeen, ma'an nabiyyina, wa siddiqina, wa shuhada'i, wa salihin. A final sentence to the family of my dear brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to allow you to carry on the tradition of my dear brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from what you know you need protection from. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn hearts towards you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplift you and assist you and help you and aid you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surround you with those who have a genuineness and a purity of heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you the great honor and the dignity of maintaining the blessedness and legacy of your father, of your husband, for many years to come with our assistance. Ameen. Allahumma wa sallim wa zid wa ba'ad. على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر له وارحم وعافه واعف عنه وأكرم نزله ووسع مدخله اللهم ارزقه دارا خير من داره وأهلا خير من أهله اللهم اجمعه مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين واجمعنا معهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا اللهم اهدنا إلى سواء السبيل اللهم اهدنا يا أرحم الراحمين واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهددا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته آمين جزاك الله خير الشيخ رحيا آمين 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 so inshallah next we'll go to Dr. Omar who's one of the more um, one of the newest instructors at Al-Maqib uh, so inshallah Dr. Omar please share a few words of your memories of Sheikh Mohammed and some reflections Just wait a second. Um, I think we're just the system's just a little late. Alhamdulillah, many of you just sharing in the chat how much um, you're finding comfort through hearing the stories, the reminders, and obviously um, the du'as being able to say them together. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Dr. Omar. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa bihi nasta'in wa ba'd. Um, so, so first of all. You know, as you had mentioned, um, me being a sort of a newer instructor, um, so I, I think it's just a little different angle. There's so much, so many beautiful years of friendship and stories that we've been hearing. Um, I, so I just, I just want to mention from the outset. Perhaps it's the counselor in me, but uh, there's a lot of instructors who have very deep ties for many years uh, with Sheikh Muhammad Rahimahullah. So if they're in your community you know, just reach out to them, ask them how they're doing. Um, tell them, you know, you're, you're making dua for Sheikh Muhammad. Sometimes those on the front line, uh, you know, it, it's just a lot to take in. And while everyone is grieving, sometimes we forget about them. Um, so just, just reach out, inshallah. It's something simple uh, can go a long way. Um, as someone <clears throat> who never actually met Sheikh Muhammad, um, one of the few instructors for, you know, maybe logistic reason, logistical reasons or whatever, that doesn't mean that there wasn't uh, some sort of impact. I'll share one story. Uh, when I was listening to a, 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 it was, I think it was a podcast or an interview uh, a few years back, and uh, they were talking about how Al-Maghrib formed, uh, the formation of the institution. And, you know, Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah, he always has things going on. And uh, while he was the founder of Al-Maghrib, the, the, you know, sort of the day-to-day -day operations and a lot of those things, you know, from my understanding, was kind of moved on to, to other folks, right? He may certainly have been in an advisory position or role, but he wasn't sort of the, the head person. And the interviewer asked, you know, he started this thing which really was revolutionary, which was pioneering in the Islamic da'wah field. And he's not really 
in the day to days anymore. Like he's not, you know, coming in there, he's not there, but he's sort of there. You know, it's founder syndrome. Sometimes we hear about um, with people who build something um, and they just can't seem to let others come in and thrive. And I, I can't forget that the, uh, the speaker was saying, like, it didn't even cross his mind. He's like, there has been none of that. That's just not how he operates. He saw it as, you know, he, he started this, he did what he did with it, and then it's time for others to come. And alhamdulillah, the institution still going strong, still growing. And this is just a testament to the kind of person that Sheikh Muhammad was. Um, for many people, he was really their first introduction to a English-speaking, Islamically educated scholar. Uh, one of those people was my wife. Uh, she remembers listening to him. She said she, he was really the first one, uh, which, and he was just captivating. And afterwards, she went up to him and asked him advice on hifz of Qur'an, memorizing Qur'an which alhamdulillah she was able to do. And she said he was, he gave advice, but more than that, he was attentive and gave advice. It wasn't like some sort of generic prepared script, right? Like reminds me of the, the Maya Angelou saying, people don't remember uh, what you tell them, but they'll remember uh, how you made them feel, right? Something along those lines. Um, so, you know, uh, it certainly is, uh, it was very sad, you know, the day seemed off uh, first hearing about that. But alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. We have a life beyond this. And seeing so many people speak so well of him, inshallah, this is a good sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his deeds um, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites us all in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give patience to the family and for the general community out there, of course, making dua for him. But if there's something we can go beyond that with with other needs for the family um, maybe those who are local or in, in other ways as well i think that is the least we can do so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept sheikh muhammad's efforts have mercy on his soul and give patience to his family i mean dr omar um alhamdulillah in the past couple of days um sheikh yasser burjaz has been sharing some beautiful reflections i know online at his local community and sheikh yasser is also someone who has known uh, Sheikh Mohammed for very long and has a history. So I definitely you know, have been enjoying the little stories, the insights, Sheikh Yasser, some of the, you, you brought a smile to many of our faces and some of the inside jokes that you had. So we're looking forward to, you know, getting a little bit more of that, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka wa nabiya wa muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa tasliman kathiratun ma ma ba'd. Honestly, uh, um, I, I thought I was done uh, with crying uh, for the past two days. And alhamdulillah, after having some uh, uh, therapeutic sessions with some of the old timers of Al-Maghrib here in Dallas, we got together, we spoke about him, we just started sharing all these beautiful stories. We laughed, we cried. Uh, then we had a beautiful session last night at Valley Ranch Islamic Center dedicated to, uh, um, to Sheikh Muhammad's legacy. And subhanAllah, the message was full. Uh, people even they came from uh, different places and different cities as well. Uh, it was it was such a uh, such a beautiful testimony for the goodness of Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And uh, again, subhanAllah, it, it keeps, uh, I thought again I was done with the crying thing, but then hearing Sheikh uh, Naber speak and then crying and I started crying again, I said like, oh my God, Allah musta'an, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, shower him with his mercy and, and, and uh, accept his, uh, the best of his deeds, ya rabbil alameen. And every time I think that, that subhanAllah khalas, yeah, we, we get to know, we have seen everything that Sheikh Muhammad was doing. Um, and then uh, you get this message and this email and this, uh, uh, um, you know, random person comes talk to you about it. And until this time, I still getting these messages and random of these messages showing you more of Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, and I don't know, I'm going to share, a, I'm going to share a comment I got actually on Facebook, subhanAllah, that I'm not really sure if anyone knows about this private uh, and an act of charity from Sheikh Muhammad Rahmatullah. So this brother, without mentioning his name, actually he posted on, on uh, a comment on my uh, um, on something I posted about Sheikh Muhammad. And we were colleagues uh, together in Medina. He was also a student uh, of uh, al Jamal al-Islamiyya at the time. So he says, uh, he says uh, one day, uh, because they were living outside in, uh, uh, outside of the dorm, in their house, they were married, so they were living actually in the different places. 
he goes i came to sheikh muhammad and i was kind of like so disturbed and so kind of like in a difficult situation because uh i didn't have enough money and that that time the students of medina they didn't really have much really to to survive on he says i didn't have enough money and i was behind on my rent and i'm about to be affected so I was kind of talking to Sheikh Muhammad about this, and he said, so he did not even actually hesitate. He went straight to his house, and he took the gold out of his wife's hands, and he sold it, and he said, he said, paid for my rent for the whole year. I I just read this, and I'm just like, oh, subhanAllah. Allah, you made it so difficult and hard for everybody who comes after you uh, to, to try to match you or even to come close. To what you've been doing you know in public and in private and, and with, with people that you know and you don't know it is it is so much to to match allah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him and 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 reward him for his kindness and goodness ya Rabbil Alameen. i personally my my relationship with sheikh muhammad began obviously when we were in medina and i was uh um i was uh the uh, uh the senior students over there i was uh, the valedictorian and I noticed later on, I said, as I started knowing Sheikh Muhammad later in life, subhanAllah, is that he is truly a man. He's a leader who gravitates towards leaders and gravitates leaders around him. He is looking for success in his life and looking for success stories from people around him and looking for successful people. He wants to learn how this works. And that's why I believe, subhanAllah, how he, he came, tried to get to know me. I mean, I was a, he, for me, he was a, like a random kid, really coming from uh, from Canada, from a different country, like, who are you even? But subhanAllah, we have this bond afterwards, and uh, la ilaha illallah, and uh, uh, alhamdulillah, I was able to help him um, overcome some of the difficulties of learning in Medina. So I taught him, reassure him the path to seek knowledge. And, uh, um, but when I came to the U.S. over here, subhanAllah, I believe he uh, took me under his arm and he taught me how to deliver that knowledge. Like I gave him that knowledge and he's now teaching me how to deliver the knowledge in the way, the most effective way. And definitely it was a blessing that Alhamdulillah I'm grateful for. One of the things Sheikh Muhammad uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, um, he, he taught me early, early on. He says, look, when it comes to knowledge, and that's his philosophy. He says, when it comes to knowledge, knowledge is happiness. Because don't you see when you teach somebody something new and all of a sudden they react to it, it, it unintentionally they react with a smile. When you teach somebody something, they smile because they feel happy. They feel empowered because knowledge is happiness. And he was wondering why people, when they go to these halaqat and these classes and the massages, they're just so exhausted, so fatigued, so tired, and they're grumpy. They don't like, you know, happy what they're learning. He wanted to change that. He wanted to see people enjoy learning. And I believe he did. He changed the, the face of history for learning and taking education, uh, Islamic education in the West. Yesterday, I was speaking, subhanAllah, to my community as well, and I was saying that Muhammad, for me, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he really, he brought knowledge. He's just like the Ford of knowledge in our time. He brought knowledge to the average person. He made the average person study tafsir, study usul, study aqidah, study sirah, study things that once it was thought to be an elitist society only that can really learn that. You have to be a student of knowledge in order for you to, start to understand this kind of thing and so forth. But he wanted to make it so simple to the average Muslim, brother and sister, men and women, young and adult, just to be able to be part of this great legacy of Islam and making knowledge part of your life. You know, he wants you to be happy and knowledge definitely brought happiness to many, 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 many people. Subhanallah, the stories we've been listening and sharing, you know, with others is just like unbelievable. Everybody was just excited about the fact that you were just so happy to be part of this legacy, part of this knowledge and ilm that he was spreading, alhamdulillah, Amin. Sheikh Muhammad, for me, he um, he wasn't a dreamer, really. He was a visionary. Because I remember when we first sat together, and uh, that's part of the history of al Maghrib. one day, hopefully, we can document, inshallah, professionally and, and in, a, in a proper way. I was with him. I was the first teacher to be recruited uh, by Sheikh Muhammad. When my English was broken, completely broken, I was still new in the country, subhanAllah. But he says, you know what? You're going to have to do it. He had the vision. He said, basically, I wasn't seeing myself what he was seeing in me. But he was that man, he saw that, you know what, you succeeded when you were in Medina, you're going to succeed when you're here in America. Although I wasn't have that capacity in myself to learn really, subhanAllah. Uh, but uh, uh, he saw that and he wasn't just a dreamer, he was a visionary. And he just, he saw you 10 years ahead. Like he knows that in 10 years, you're going to be this, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that. And for me, that's ridiculous, like sitting in a hotel room 
uh, on the bed together with a laptop and trying to you know figure out what class should we teach what we're going to call this class and what kind how we even draw the, the poster for that class and all these kind of little things subhanallah and then he just like out of nowhere he comes out he said look we're going to call this class the fiqh of love and i could see in his eyes at the time we were laughing i was like what are you talking about but i can see that the man was really you know yani light years ahead he was seeing it he wasn't just dreaming it he was seeing it and that's something is, is just unique about sheikh muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi that uh, uh, he was really able to see things that we were not able to see. And alhamdulillah, they were very happy and glad that uh, uh, I was part of this beautiful legacy of, uh, of Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala You know, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, through him, I came to learn, so I, I came to know many, many, many people that I cherish in my life right now as friends, as students, as, uh, you know, more than that, alham family, you could call them, alhamdulillah, I mean. And I believe that one of the greatest things about Sheikh Muhammad, he was a connector. He's a man who really uh, knows the people, loves the people, works for the people, and he connects the people together. Because he knows, you know, if you wanna if you wanna make a, a legacy out of it, you really have to connect them together. They have to be a family. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, I can tell you, he he is the one that really connects all these people from around the globe, from around the world, uh, to get to know each other. At the beginning, for those who know the Al Maghrib uh, history uh, through uh, screen names and your avatars and, and all that stuff on the forums. And then when we had our first AM summit in 2008, and people got together and started meet, meeting in conferences, because, oh my God, you're this and you're that by the screen names they had on the forums, subhanAllah. What a, what a sweet gathering we used to have uh, because Sheikh Muhammad, rahmatullah. It was always, always those beautiful moments here and there that you, uh, uh, you look at. And again, you see that he was a great connector, alhamdulillah. Many, many people like uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, like Akh Mustafa Khalifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, the, the, the legend of Durba, rahmatullah ta'ala. We met through uh, Sheikh Muhammad and we became so close, alhamdulillah. And uh, never forget these beautiful memories that we cherish together. And I'm sure that many others also remember these beautiful uh, memories, alhamdulillah, rabbi Amin. So if anything good that we have done in this world, uh, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of teaching in this country, uh, I'll give the credit back to Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala If anything is going to come in the future as well because of that, I will still give the credit to Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala. Man la yashkur nas la yashkur Allah. If you are not grateful to the people, you will never be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're so grateful to be part of his life. And I'm so grateful on a personal level to make him as part of my personal life. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. It is a, a privilege that I cherish for the rest of my life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him rahmah and forgiveness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to raise him in the highest ranks of Jannah al Firdus al Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah Azza wa when our time comes that we have we live a legacy as beautiful as his legacy and that we meet with him in Jannah al Firdus al Ala with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salihin. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka anabiyya wa muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Sheikh Yasser, I still have my moments and I'm hearing the Shayyuk talk where I'm like, who are they talking about? Um, you know, it's still hard to believe that this is, we're talking about Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and that he's not with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and his family. Jazakallah khair. So many beautiful subhanAllah stories that are continue to inspire us. And so may we carry on that legacy. Um, may we all be a sadaqah jariya for him. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, Shaykh Ahsan Hani with us who worked with Shaykh Muhammad on different capacities and different projects. Um, mashallah, I know Sheikh Hassan, we connected on the New Muslim Academy work um, a couple of years back. So it's so nice to have you here. And we're looking forward to you know, hearing a few words from you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Uh, since I heard the news of Sheikh Muhammad's passing, Rahimallah Ta'ala, a few days ago, I've been reflecting on uh, my connection with him and in the various capacities, uh, as Sister Razia mentioned that I knew him, I worked with him on a number of projects, not only al Maghrib Institute, but a number of different projects that we did together. Uh, but also more than that, just the personal interactions that I had with him. And there are other instructors and people here that knew him better, <clears throat> that spent more time with him. Uh, but one of the things when I reflect uh, about Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the things that comes to my mind is the hadith uh, of Anas radiyallahu anna tirmidhi that the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا إِسْتَعْمَلَهُ If Allah wants good from someone, he uses him. 
And they said, O Messenger of Allah, how does he use him? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah gives that person the ability and the success to do goodness before their death. And we know that one of the final acts, if not the final thing that the Shaykh did, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, before he passed away, is that he prayed salah. But his whole life was a testament to doing good, uh, to connecting people to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And that's essentially what we as du'at, as students of knowledge do. We try to connect people to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And I think everyone's attested to the fact that Shaykh uh, Muhammad al-Sharif rahimahullah ta'ala wasn't someone who had a great ego. He wasn't someone who called himself or wanted people to connect to him and his personality. He was always trying to make that connection between people, between Muslims and between their Lord and Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even now in his death, inshallah ta'ala, this is something that we're doing. We're finding our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking lessons and benefits from what we take from his life. And when I look back at the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and we know that that's the greatest calamity that could have ever affected this ummah. There is no greater calamity that affected the ummah, uh, the ummah of Islam than the death of its messenger and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the moment after that that you realize that there is, there is hope for the ummah, that the ummah will continue, that the, amongst the companions they will continue to go from strength to strength. And what comes to my mind is that statement of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he stood amongst the companions who were going through all of their various stages of grief and each one of them was trying to process what they were feeling and what they were experiencing in very different ways from the most senior of those companions such as Umar radiallahu anhu and Uthman radiallahu anhu to the other companions. And Abu Bakr stood amongst them radiallahu anhu and he said, whosoever worships Allah, Allah is ever living. He will never die. And whosoever worships Muhammad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has passed away. And you realize then that the companions understood that our connection in this life is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so long as you continue to keep that connection, then there is always inshallah ta'ala good for you and you have benefited from your teachers and from those people that have influenced you. And one thing that Shaykh Muhammad did, and I think as we've heard from various people today and over the last few days, and inshallah ta'ala we will continue to hear from them over the foreseeable future, is that he connected people to Allah, whether through knowledge in Al-Maghrib Institute or whether through making that connection through dua and tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having certainty in Allah azza wa jal, he's someone who wanted to connect people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I first met uh, Shaykh Muhammad, I think it was in 2008, 2009, when I first became an Al-Maghrib Institute instructor and he came to Birmingham and he visited me in my house and we spent a, a great few hours, a, a number of hours, speaking about his vision. And it's one of the things that inspired me to join Al-Maghrib Institute. One of the, the main um, you know, memories that I have of Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif ta'ala is his love for teaching Islam and the way that he wanted to teach. And I remember one of the, you know, the, the first course that I actually taught in Al-Maghrib Institute was in Ottawa. And the Shaykh used to live in Ottawa at that time. And I remember teaching there was the tafsir of Surat Al-Kahf and this must have been uh, in the latter part of 2009. And he actually came and he sat for a while and he spoke to me. And one of the things that he told me, one of the... One of the, the, or the advice that I took from him at that time is he said that the most influential teacher or the best teacher or the most effective teacher is the one who can take a student from a very basic level and help them upon that journey of ascending into knowledge. You take someone and almost you make for them a staircase. You give to them steps that they can climb so that they can go from what is a basic foundational level into a much more advanced level. And that's something which has stuck with me all of these years and it's something which I always try to implement and do Throughout, uh, throughout my own teaching. One of the other memories that I have uh, of Sheikh Muhammad and one of the things that I really benefited from and one of the things that I loved about the way that he had a vision for Al-Maghrib Institute and it's something which the, the staff and the, and the brothers at Al-Maghrib and the shiukh uh, have, have carried on uh, and, and, and I can, and can attest to inshallah is the, the thing that Sheikh Muhammad had that he really wanted was for students of knowledge in the West to be honored. He wanted this thing, you know, a lot of us came from that time period in the 80s and 90s where the imams of the masjids and the students of knowledge and so on weren't really very well respected or they weren't really given their rights uh, in terms of respect and in terms of what they needed in order to be, able to, in, uh, to be able to teach Islam and to reach out to people and to connect the next generation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the things that I remember most vividly in all of my interactions with him is that we really had this vision that the students of knowledge, imams, da'is, sheikhs, they should be people who have a, a strong standing in the community because we honor them and we respect them, not because of who they are as individuals or personalities, but because of who it is or what it is that they represent. They represent the heirs of the Prophet These are the peoples, these are the people who have inherited knowledge. 
and they're spending their days and their nights and they're sacrificing and their families are sacrificing in order to be able to spread that knowledge of this religion. And they deserve because of that honor and they deserve because of that respect. And that's something which I found uh, greatly from Sheikh Muhammad Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala. And one of the things that I just want to finish upon, and I have many memories, and again, you know, I think like many of the people that are speaking today, I tried to write some stuff down and, and I couldn't really process how to, where to start and where to begin and, and how to kind of uh, order those thoughts. Uh, but one of the personal interactions that I had with him, which I think also speaks to the wide issue of, mm-hmm. of his family, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for them. Uh, I, a few years back, I went to Dubai with my eldest daughter uh, and I was going on a personal visit. And I reached out to the sheikh as I usually did when I was in Dubai. We, we would normally sit or we would come and meet and we would go for, for a meal or we'd go out somewhere. But I had with me on this case, my, my eldest daughter with me, uh, who at the time was maybe 19 years old. And so I reached out to the sheikh and I said, look, I'm in Dubai and I'd love to meet you, but I have my daughter with me as well. So maybe we can just, you know, quickly meet, give salams and so on. But the sheikh, you know, as he always did, he wanted to sit and he wanted to have a meal and go out and spend some time because we didn't really see each other very often, uh, you know, because of the distances and the time and so on. And so what he actually did at that time was he arranged for his wife and for his children to come along as well. So that my daughter could go be be with his wife and his and his children, his daughters, uh, and she can spend some time with them, and they could take her to the mall, and they could buy her stuff and whatever, and we could have some time by ourselves. And that's something which, you know, which I greatly appreciated because it would have been difficult for me. You know, my daughter would have become very bored very quickly listening to two uh, older men just speak. Uh, but he actually understood that this is something which we want to do, so we have to kind of make a provision for us. So this wasn't my idea; it was something which he which he himself suggested. Uh, Rahimahullah Taala. And we did, and she had a great time. They went and spent a number of hours together, and likewise, we were able to connect and speak and benefit from one another as well. And and again, that's something which I remember. It's just those personal moments that I think all of us experienced with the sheikh uh, that shows that his his impact wasn't just on the da'wah that he left behind, but in the way that he influenced people and the way that he benefited and tried to help and advise one another. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jalla uh, showers his mercy upon Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever elevates his status and forgives his shortcomings and that Allah Azzawajal gives us all the ability to remain steadfast upon this religion and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes from amongst those people who uh, who inshallah ta'ala continue on his legacy and, and, and leave for ourselves a legacy as well and I want to inshallah ta'ala make dua for his family because the sacrifice that we all make as as imams and as sheikhs and as du'at uh, it is something which is greatly felt by our families and, and we can understand especially in the situation what that means but it's something which they do on a daily basis. They sacrifice so that we can do, we can do what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wanted from us. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah Taala makes this easy for them, that Allah Azza gives them the patience and the fortitude and the strength and the steadfastness to be able to overcome this trial. Barakallahu fiqh musallam bi Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, nothing can be said more than what you said. Um, so next we have uh, Sheikh Suleiman Hani, alhamdulillah, who got to interact with Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah, and you know, was really a big part of that journey. So Sheikh Suleiman, um, who mashallah is an instructor, very much part of the Ilma Khib team, looking forward to hearing some of your experiences and just reflections on uh, Sheikh Muhammad's, you know, your relationship with him. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Barakallahu feekum. Honestly, I, I don't even know where to begin because, uh, as you heard from many others before, uh, there's just so many different things that Sheikh Muhammad Sharif rahmatullahi alayhi, has uh, brought uh, of goodness and impacted of goodness in our lives as individuals, as communities, and really for the entire world, alhamdulillah. And that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there was someone like this amongst us. Uh, one of the things that I can emphasize is that... Uh, and a big part of what I wanted to do, even as a high schooler back then, in, in terms of seeking knowledge, uh, it wasn't clear cut in terms of how I would be able to utilize something like this in the West. And so with the efforts of, you know, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, I felt like I had a renewed ambition, that there is a way for us to facilitate this knowledge to our communities. There's a way to take this uh, inheritance from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and distribute it and facilitate it in a manner that is uh, appealing to people. And in fact, it inspired and set off a, a, a series of inspirations towards others uh, in terms of institutes and organizations. It raised the standards for so many people. I would frequently reference 
Sheikh Muhammad, when it came to uh, punctuality, I'm someone who, every, everyone who knows me knows, I really care about time management, time mastery. I speak about it often. Uh, and so everything that I had been reading and doing, I felt I could relate to what Sheikh Muhammad Rahmatullahi Ali was uh, teaching and instilling in us uh, of values. And I'm thinking here about how uh, you know, the, the optimism that comes from having interacted with him and learning from him and uh, his, his effects and his uh, influence on shaping our lives uh, should cause us to ask, what is my role? What is your role in this world? Because oftentimes people think one person can't make a difference. And if the legacy of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif rahmatullahi alayhi can be summarized amongst the summaries is that one person can absolutely make a difference. One individual can make a huge difference. This is not to say that there are not other factors, that there are not people who along the way helped to facilitate and that his family did not sacrifice time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and elevate their ranks through their patience and perseverance in sharing his time with the rest of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But believe in yourself and believe, and, and Sheikh Muhammad would want us to believe that you can make a difference. The difference you make, however, does not have to be necessarily known to everyone. Because as we know from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the continuous charity uh, could be, uh, in terms of your ongoing deeds, that sadaqa jariya, it could be the knowledge that you left behind, and it could be a righteous child that prays for you. So investing time in family, investing time in raising your children might be the best thing you can possibly do. In fact, you may be raising up the next uh, legend, the next legacy for our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in goodness. I just completed right now, so I apologize about the background here. I just completed a workshop on the promises of Allah in the Quran. And the first moment in which I heard the news that Shaykh Muhammad rahimahullah passed away, uh, after that initial just shock, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi repeating it over and over and over again, I looked up some of his last videos out of curiosity. And I didn't know this, subhanAllah. This workshop that I did today had been planned for a, a long time. One of the lectures that showed up on the very first page was the promises of Allah in the Qur'an. And as I went through it, almost everything that I had been preparing and writing down, he had been touching on in that Ilmfest lecture. And especially here, thinking about the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically for the believers who do good with the limited time that they have. Not only might they see the goodness in this life, hayatan tayyibah, but the goodness of the akhirah as well the reward and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust in the promise of Allah. The more you trust in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you will take advantage of your time in this world to follow in the footsteps of individuals and great legends and inspirations like Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah have mercy on him. And so while there are many other things that he has influenced in terms of our lives and our communities, the question is what are we going to do moving forward? How will we carry on this kind of legacy? Uh, what will we do in terms of being awakened in our hearts? Well, somebody recently said to me, a family member, he said that the scary thought is when you see the outpouring of support and dua and the impact that he has had on the world, may Allah have mercy on him, is that some people will be awakened by this and others will not benefit. Others will ignore and they won't change their lives. If there's anything that should cause you to feel like you should do more with your life, it is moments like this. And in a way, this is your opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to start what it is you want to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so don't hold yourself to a low standard. Be ambitious and optimistic and work with others. And not just optimistic, but hopeful as well. Uh, Iman and wahtisab and that you worship Allah with belief. You have full conviction and you're hoping for that reward. You're hoping for the effect. You're hoping that if you keep trying and you don't give up, that there will be a ripple effect of good on the world. Whether or not your name is known is not the point, but your legacy is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something we learn, in fact, from the legacy of Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. The last thing that I'll say is this. You know how oftentimes many, uh, many people who are busy, in general, most people, if they receive too many emails and messages, they're less likely to respond to everyone, right? So a lot of mashayikh, generally speaking, are just over uh, bombarded with emails and questions and things like this. To the extent that literally if we were to do nothing but respond to messages, that's all we would be doing. And so it's, it's not always easy to see that there's an email, a question. Sheikh Muhammad in 2005, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, when Al-Maghrib came to Michigan for the first time, my brother and my sister had been very active amongst the very first students. And they were very active with the Qabila. My sister was exam coordinator later on. 
uh, we were all attendees, the entire family. Uh, eventually, at one point, one of my other sisters was an Amira. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very blessed and honored to be working with this Sadaqah Jari that he left behind in the area of uh, teaching and, and academic affairs. My brother emailed Sheikh Muhammad a question. Just asking him a question, uh, and he benefited from one of his lectures. And Sheikh Muhammad responded with a lengthy email to the extent that there was so much ihsan in his response. He asked my brother, and we still have the email, subhanAllah. He asked my brother if he could take permission to, you know, kind of like, you know, modify it and take it out and then to uh, basically share it on the forums back in the day with the Al Maghrib forums. And, and that was because he put so much excellence into what he was doing. Brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you do, make time to help other people. You don't know the impact that it will have. You don't know how much they'll benefit from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. And allow us to continue the different forms of Sadaqah Jariyah. We are all in a way, the, the manifestation of that Sadaqah Jariyah, a reflection of his Sadaqah Jariyah with all that he has done for the Ummah. Raise your standards for yourself. Believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utilize your time as best as you can and take something from this moment because these are very rare moments for the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and grant his family patience and perseverance and condolences really to the entire Ummah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Salaman. Um, alhamdulillah, so many beautiful gems and inspiration. It really, I think, captures, um, alhamdulillah, the hope, the vision uh, that Shaykh Muhammad left and may Allah have to strengthen uh, you in that work. So alhamdulillah, we have uh, Shaykh Riyad on now, who's also, uh, you know, Marshall worked closely with Shaykh Muhammad in the past and has always brought such a beautiful energy to his work. So uh, Jazakallah khair for being with us, Sheikh Riyad, and you know, I know we're looking forward to hearing from you. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Riyad, are you able to hear me? Uh, I can't hear you. We can see you. Not sure. No, we're still not getting any sound. Are you connected to maybe Bluetooth at all or maybe your audio setting? Sorry, you guys, just be patient with us as we help shape you up. Um, if you want to check maybe the audio setting if your mic's connected. No, no, no sound. So I'm guessing you're not able to hear me either then. Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but yeah, we can't hear you. Oh, subhanAllah. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. Well, you know what, Shaykh Liyad, why don't you try hopping off and hop back on? I know sometimes that works too. Okay, alhamdulillah. And while Shaykh Riyad is doing that, inshallah, um, you know, for those of you that have been watching, have been with us, um, you know, feel free to obviously type in the chat, share some of the gems, that you're holding on to, um, you know, alhamdulillah, like, uh, what's been beautiful is each instructor coming and sharing how, you know, Sheikh Muhammad had a very personal relationship with each one, and, um, and alhamdulillah, you know, had a very personal relationship and was able to give them that attention, was really able to make them feel that closeness, and I think that's what's so beautiful about Sheikh Muhammad. He never held back from that. You're back, Sheikh Riyad, are you... Oh, no, we're not here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I just like to can log back in. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, I don't know why I'm shaking. Because I don't know, I don't know where to start from. Um, I know it's and it's gonna take time to digest this whole thing. When I I, I literally deleted it, I received something on the, on the social media like on WhatsApp scam. I deleted it. You know, I said you know, why people do this? So I deleted. I it's not like I didn't want to believe it, but you know how things are with social media now people just i i thought it was some sort of a scam or, or anything um uh, and this bit of truth it is a bit of truth but it is true as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it in the quran 
in the Quran, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ Come with the truth. And the truth is, is that we all at some point go into the truth is, is that we shall stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is al-haqq. So, my brothers and sisters, is that um, Prophet sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from the sudden death. But tell that um, um, I'm still, it's still early for me or or I got a long way to go or you, you never know, you know, whether you're this, this truth that you know, puts an end to everything, that puts an end to everything, this haqiqah. It puts an end to the sadness of those who are sad and to the happiness of those who are happy. It puts an end to the sickness of those, to those who are healthy, to the fortune of those who are fortunate, to those who are poor. This reality, this haqiqa is al maut. It is this. It is a haqiqa, and it is a bitter haqiqa. Drank from it, from this bitter cup called death. Right. So was Ali. Rahmatullah. But all I know, my brothers and sisters, is that, that Sheikh Muhammad, inshallah, he's in a better place. All, all I know, my brothers and sisters, is that Sheikh uh, have answered the questions of Man Rabbuk. And Muhammad has, inshallah, has, he did, in say, you know, in fact, re, you know, replied, because he lived in accordance with the commands of Allah. Azza wa Jal. And he did say, Deen yal Islam. Muhammad's life was about Islam. Everything he did was about, and he did. All I know that he answered the question would say, My prophet is Muhammad because Prophet, because Sheikh Muhammad, uh, love for Prophet Muhammad, if some of you who may take in the uh, the Sheikh Muhammad. You know the Sira seminar, uh, and when it used to come to the death of the Prophet, you would see Sheikh Muhammad alayhi, you know, sobbing and crying, you know, off of the love at Muhammad sallallahu All I know is that Sheikh Muhammad, when elevated his soul into the heavens, and as the as the soul knocked at the gate of the first heaven. The angels inside the heavens were who? And the angel answered, Muhammad ibn Ali, you know, Sheikh, his father, the name of his father. And then the angels would say, This soul, this beautiful soul, all this smell coming from this beautiful soul. And then I've said, This is the soul of, of Muhammad ibn, you know, his father. So all I know, he was elevated into the heavens Allah Azza wa Jal would have said write the name of my slave amongst the Iliyin those who are in the highest level and then bring him back for his soul shall come back to earth for he shall be resurrected is that when Muhammad you know this beautiful man bright man came in in fact before that all I know is is he was told by this bright-faced man, Abshir, glad tidings to you. Glad tidings promised. And Sheikh Muhammad have said, Who are you, you beautiful face with this beautiful news? Who are you? And that man said, I am your, I am, you made me. I am your salam. I am your siyam. Ya Muhammad, I am your, your I am your, I am your I am Al Maghrib, which you have uh, institute, which you have initiated and learned, which you have memorized, which you, which you have taught to others. I am the lectures, which you have given series. I am the discover you programs. I am the dua. Pro I am Al Salih. I am a righteous deed, Ya Muhammad. And then that beautiful man will act. All I know is that Sheikh Muhammad is in a better place. You know, he has said before 
rahmatullah alayh, you know, so how do you want to be remembered once you die? Once you die, he has asked that question, how do you want to be remembered? You know, sometimes there's some people who will be, you know, they, they, people will hear about their name and they will never heard of this person. Who is he? Never seen him, never heard of him. He's like a dot. And some would say, who? Inna lillahu ni raja. Muhammad al-Sharif. Inna lillahu ni raja. La hawla wa la quwa. People that have never seen him making dua for him. This is how you'd be remembered. This is how he will be remembered. And this is how he will be remembered until the end of time. Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. People are still benefiting. A lot of us today are in his book of records. A lot of people who did not pray sat up into his lectures. People who were not fasting, people who were not doing wearing hijab started wearing his lectures and his seminars. People who were having issues at home, Allah empowered them and, and blessed them with, 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 with serenity in their home after this is all I know about Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif. He did leave a legacy, a mountain. We have lost a giant. We have lost a genius. Yet his work remains behind him. Rahmatullah ala jamiah. Rahmatullah ala mercy upon him and give that tidings and patience, beautiful patience to him. all who loves him and, and to all those Zam the brothers and sisters who are working, keep working with him, inshallah ta'ala. This sadaqa jariya, you know, ongoing sadaqa charity in his misal hasanat. Jazakumullah khair. It's been a while. It's been a long time. But I'm happy to the, the you know, the, this instant is not, not as uh, happy as I would have been present with you. But inshallah. Alhamdulillah that I'm here at least so I can show some gratitude for what he has done for me and what he has done for my family and what he has done for the Ummah of Rasulullah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Riyad. Wa alaikum as-salam. Alhamdulillah, I know the connection was a little um unstable, so Jazakallah for being patient. Alhamdulillah, we were still able to get some of those gems from Shaykh Riyad. Um, Alhamdulillah, next we have Sheikh Majid Mahmoud, who's also one of the instructors with Al Maghrib. Salam, Sheikh Majid. Thank you for being on with us. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for the uh, hosting the event and for putting this event together. Thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing a few words from you. I know, mashallah, you had your own personal and beautiful relationship with Sheikh Mohammed. So please go ahead and share a few words. All right. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. First of all, I'd like to thank all those who uh, are watching us. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you to Al Maghrib Institute for putting this event together. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever good comes out of this, whatever good comes out of Al Maghrib and other wonderful projects that Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif Rahmahullah is uh, associated with, to be in his scale of good deeds. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, as you've heard many times, there's a lot that can be said, but there's one line that he keeps saying. He keeps mentioning in his marketing, and I know many people who know Sheikh Muhammad, they know this line, which is, give your excuses a black eye. No excuses. Give your excuses a black eye. And subhanAllah, something about Sheikh Muhammad is his ihsan and his excellence. So I'll share with you a few things, inshallah, very quick. One of the things that Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif has taught me in his programs is to always have like a plan B. He says, for example, now you're having a class, you're having a live stream, you know, uh, a class that you're preaching or whatever the case may be, have another laptop ready just in case you lose the first connection. And if you don't have, uh, if you have Wi-Fi, make sure that you have a, enough data plan on your cell phone. So there was always a plan B that he used to do. And this is an example of his ihsan. Now, in case I lose my connection, I'm out of in, in a in, uh, different city right now, just trying my best to, to log in. But the point being here is having a plan B, and this definitely saved me in many situations. And that's something that shows the example and the ihsan of Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah. Also, another thing to share regarding Sheikh Muhammad, I attended his niche near a niche hero class, and this was a very intensive class regarding, you know, uh, 
at obtaining your um, or seeking to achieve your ultimate goals in life and so on. And one of the things that we had to do in that workshop is to actually come in front of Sheikh Muhammad and then we have to verbalize what is it that we want to achieve. And generally, I'm a very uh, any shy person, uh, introvert, whatever you want to call it. So for me to stand up there, that's one difficulty. And to tell everybody what I want to achieve, that's even more difficult. And the actual goal I want to achieve because Sheikh Muhammad is there is even more difficult. And you may wonder, okay, what is it that I want to achieve at that time? This was back around approximately 2000, maybe 12, approximately. So my turn came up and he says, okay, your turn. What's your goal? What is it that you want to accomplish? So I was very nervous and I told him my dream, my wish. And he wants, you know, for those who know Shah Muhammad, sometimes he wants to be very specific with your goals. You don't just say, I want to be successful. No, be exactly. You want to be a successful engineer that works on... BMW cars, uh, suspension parts, you know, he's very specific. So I said, my, my, my wish, my, my dream that I wish to contribute is to become an Al-Maghrib instructor. And without a doubt, he was shocked, but he did not laugh. He did not say you, because I didn't really have any uh, Islamic background education, like formal, like he and other wonderful mashayikh have done. So he looked at me, he smiled, didn't rebuke, then he actually kind of gave me a plan. He actually helped out on how to become an Al-Maghrib instructor, subhanAllah. And one of the things that he said, I would not hire an Al-Maghrib instructor unless he's half of the Quran. And I was like 20 some years old at that time. So subhanAllah, this was very encouraging. You know, may Allah accept from all of us. So I went ahead and actually went to a Quran memorization program and finished the whole Quran before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this too, inshallah, will be on a scale of good deeds. And after the Niche Hero program, this comes to show you like, when he gives advice or when he re is sincere about his projects, it's not just, you know, well, I want to make money and move on. No, I'm going to take care of my client, going to take care of my students. So I get an email from Al Maghrib Institute offering a full ride scholarship. Now, most people do not know this. And this, maybe this is the first time I actually mention it. He actually provided me a full ride scholarship from Al Maghrib Institute to go have an official uh, Islamic education, subhanAllah. So all of these things to be able to, uh, you know, achieve my goal, which he was able to assist me with that. Alhamdulillah, eventually with the help of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, Al-Maghrib Institute, Sheikh Walid, and the team, Bifadlillah, I was able to finish my Islamic studies, my bachelor's, Alhamdulillah, and became uh, an Al-Maghrib instructor. May Allah accept from all of us. This is one of many stories and examples uh, to share with you regarding Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. Once again, remember what he says, give your excuses a black eye. May Allah bless you all. May Allah protect you. I have a class coming up. I have a class coming up at Maghrib Seminar, August 6th, inshallah, in the Bay Area. And I feel this class has to be different. I feel I need to use what happened and realize, Majid, whatever you will do will be a sadaqah jariya for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, inshallah. So I really want to make sure this class will be a memorable one. May Allah grant us all success and all those who are teaching and all those who are going to attend and all those who are going to market and all those who are going to support. May Allah bless you, protect you. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khair, Shaykh Majid. I wish I could attend that class. Uh, inshallah, if you're in the Bay Area, definitely put that on your calendar. Alhamdulillah. Um, so Alhamdulillah, we have next uh, Shaykh Yusuf Idris. And I have a big smile on my face because I haven't seen Shaykh Yusuf for a few years. But mashallah, he helped um, or is part of in bringing Sheikh Mohammed on board with a very special project that was so dear to Sheikh Mohammed. Um, so welcome, Sheikh Youssef. It's so nice to see you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing some words from you. Oh, Sheikh Youssef, we can't hear you. Um, just check your settings. No, still nothing. Um, we had this issue with Sheikh Riyadh as well. Maybe if you just try leaving the link and then come back on. That might work. It seemed to work for him. No, can't hear still. So we'll just uh, wait, inshallah, a couple, 30 seconds till inshallah Sheikh Yusuf gets on. But um, for those that are not familiar, familiar Sheikh Yusuf Idris um, is, mashallah, the founder of New Muslim Academy. Um, a beautiful website that supports new Muslims. And so Sheikh Mohammed was um, brought on in a big part of you know helping uh, New Muslim Academy in their vision and what they were building and just really 
mashallah, you know, helping and in, in creating that really high standard that Sheikh Muhammad does things with the Ihsan and the level of excellence in creating that. So um, if you're on here and you're a recent new Muslim um, or know someone, I encourage you to go to that website. Welcome back, Sheikh Yusuf. No, we still can't hear you. Let's wait a second. I don't know. I know Sheikh Riyadh, when we started talking, then it just came on. But um, subhanAllah. You, you were able to check your settings, Sheikh? No, we're not still getting any sound. I'm not sure um, if it's because the much of the video we're able to see clearly. Uh, the, no, ah, subhanAllah. You know what, Sheikh Yusuf, we'll keep trying. We're not going to give up because we definitely want to hear from you, inshallah. So we'll keep trying and hopefully we can get that sound up and running. Um, I know Sheikh Hasib Noor is here as well. Um, oh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf, are you on your cell phone or laptop? On your cell phone? Okay, on your cell phone. We were thinking maybe if you switch devices, if that would help. Okay. Uh, inshallah. Um, but we'll have to, we'll figure it out, you guys. Inshallah, we'll get Sheikh Yusuf the three songs. Some of you asked what the website was. Um, it was newmuslimacademy.org. And that is a website that um, in the Mashallah the curriculum they have that um, Sheikh Muhammad was part of and Alhamdulillah supported. So uh, just give me a second, guys. We're going to, inshallah, have our, our next um, instructor or uh, speaker on to share a few words. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, while we're we're doing that um, and hoping that we'll get Sheikh Yusuf Idris on, I think what's been really incredible is, um, you know, and Sheikh Majid also reminding us of that, you know, as much as um, we're talking about Sheikh Hamid and Masha, the beautiful legacy he left, he was someone who was just very raw, right? He was very raw and honest in the most beautiful of ways. And so that quote that Sheikh Majid said, you know, give your excuses a black eye, that was really what Sheikh Muhammad was about. Um, he wasn't going to let you settle. There are many times where, you know, he called out students. He would call me out if I, you know, said something or, um, you know, I was playing small. He was just like, no, like that's not going to work. And so I think, uh, you know, for anyone who got to be in his classes or take from him. Okay. We, we loved that, that um, aspect of him that aspect. I, I just muted myself for the feedback. Sheikh Yusuf, are you there? Okay. Inshallah, we'll, we'll keep trying. Um, we'll see if inshallah we can get him back. But we had some sound. I heard my feedback, so alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, I was just uh, sharing that, you know, alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad was someone that was and, and that's rare to find in people. We know that, um, you know, subhanAllah, there's that famous quote that Umar bin Khattab then who was known for that, um, you know, when you praise me, you have, oh goodness, I'm like totally gonna butcher the quote. But basically he says that, you know, those friends who can be honest with you and give you criticism and feedback, um, those are the one, friends you cherish. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad was definitely one of those where, um, you know, he saw that you weren't maybe honoring your best self and you know pushing yourself to live that way he didn't have you know he wouldn't hold back and kind of letting you know and he also was very open to that um i, I shared yesterday and many other martial instructors have shared um that they you know alhamdulillah like getting that honest feedback from him so alhamdulillah we have sheikh amar with us um to come on and say a few words welcome sheikh amar hey, how are you doing alhamdulillah how are you Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so, so, Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's it's been incredible how Sheikh Muhammad Rahimullah, you know, joined, joined us in, in life and in death. I think that of the things that have been spoken about and will continue to be spoke about is the and sisterhood that Al Maghrib was able to create. Um, center in, in Dallas, Texas, uh, we were able to, uh, to gather, be able to see so many brothers and sisters 
who were all became close of Al Maghrib Institute, and and they were from California and New York and and, and so many different places. But almost even the reason why the entity is because of the relationships that they built through Al Maghrib Institute, and I think when it comes to the Ajir, um that inshallah Sheikh Muhammad uh, will receive is the amount of marriages that have happened from the large Islam in the Western world where people were able to, to, to come to, together. Not, not just learn and study Islam, but how many families were created through this work that that provides. And so there, there's there's love there's so much ahua. and I think one, one of the manifestations and, and I, I think we do have, have to 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 really you know, to how much Sheikh Muhammad is loved but also the great greatness of the 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 brotherhood that I'm with Sheikh Abu Isa Hafizullah Ta'ala I mean the I saw the video of Sheikh Abu Isa at the uh, at the graveside of Sheikh Muhammad and Really, as suddenly as, as we all got the news of Sheikh Muhammad passing away, I feel that, that someone like Sheikh Abu Isa was ready and took a flight and landed in Dubai. And, you know, there were others who also to Dubai, Ali and Noor and Atik and, and, and others, you know, who, who love Sheikh. Sheikh Muhammad, the people were in New York trying to book flights to Dubai, and people were in Houston trying to book who wanted to, uh, to, to go, was able to go. But that love that people enjoyed for Sheikh Muhammad, but also that incredible brotherhood for us facilitated and created, um, you know, through seeking knowledge way back in the day. I remember one of the first things that I heard from our Sheikh Sheikh Yasser Jass. He said, He said that knowledge is a kinship between its people. That knowledge facilitates is it facilitates that, that family bond. And you see amongst all of the people who experience either learning from Sheikh, uh, teaching with Sheikh Muhammad or uh, you know, anyway, and so this was, uh, and this continues to be part of his legacy. Mercy on him. Uh, um, there's, I, I've been dealing for the past couple of days, is even just thinking about, I think, what everybody's been trying to appreciate is what has really made him, uh, uh so you, you know, things continue to be uncovered of the different inter interactions and how meaningful and I, I talked yesterday about his intentionality the purpose with which he made his life incredibly meaningful because he made sure to design his life it happened to him but everything that he he he, he uh, tried to make sure that it was, was a incredibly high purpose so whether you see it or whether you see it manifest in discovery you the things that he gave his life's energy it was either teaching people how to worship Allah as Zawajal, learning the sacred sciences through al maghrib or it was teaching people how to dream break for themselves in whatever field that they wanted to excel in in their lives through discover you he dedicated himself to big ideas he dedicated himself to the growth of other people he invested time in making sure that other people's talents grow. And I think that's part of the reason why so many people were so affected by him because he didn't just make it about him at all, but he made it about you. And he realized that if he is able to raise a nation truly, that he would have accomplished much more than if he simply focused on Muhammad al-Sharif by himself and tried to do things by himself. And I think that's part of his energy. And that's part of the, the real lessons. Because at the end of the day, everybody stays here for a period of time and then everybody trans traverses, everybody passes away. 
And so if you're able to invest in those who are around you, then inshallah ta'ala, you invest in something beyond yourself. And that's something that will, that will outlast yourself even. So I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy on Shaykh Muhammad and to, to grant us all beautiful patience at his sudden departure and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our expectation of him something that is accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he be gathered with the prophets and the martyrs and the righteous and the truthful and what excellent companions are those. Jazakum Allah khair. I mean, Jazakum khair, Shaykh Amar, I love that line, um, you know, invest in something outside of yourself because alhamdulillah, that's really the legacy that he left behind. And, you know, yesterday, um, you know, yesterday you really caught me when he said to you, when you said that he said to you that you're an eagle and I want to see you fly. Because I remember, I remember in each hero him talking about eagles and ducks and how you can't force a duck to be an eagle. And I, I had some ducks around me that I was trying to convince him that they're eagles. And he's like, Ahmad, you got to let them go. They're ducks. Just leave them alone. And I'm like, okay. But so for him to call you an eagle, that's the highest praise. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he did, right? He made people believe in themselves. Really, that's something that you hear a lot of people say, that he believed in me before I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he pushed you. He pushed you till you were before, even before you're ready. He he challenged you, and he didn't hold yeah. back. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I know he did that with you as well, um, uh, Sheikh Omar. He Absolutely. did not hold back. Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. And we're greater people for it. Um, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala strengthen you and I mean, the work that you do. Jazakallah um, khair. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. We have Sheikh Yusuf Idris back, so we're gonna hopefully get to hear from him. So let's. So let's. Oh, we can oh. try. Salam alaikum. Can you hear me now? Yes. No? Yes. Sorry. You can? Yes. Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. 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 Uh, one of my uh, uh, British friends uh, here in, uh, in Saudi, he lives in Mecca. Um, he called me yesterday and he basically wanted to talk to me about Sheikh Muhammad and he asked me, how do you feel? And I told him to be, his name is uh, Brother Nassim. I told him, you know what, Brother Nassim, to be honest with you, I just feel like uh, I need someone to help me uh, uh, to help me cry and he said to be honest with you uh, Yusuf I feel the same exact way um, the, subhanallah for the past four days or so uh, find myself remembering Sheikh Muhammad in, in different ways and every time I, um, uh, I remember him I can't uh, but uh, shed tears over um, his loss uh, rahimahullah uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make him from the people of paradise uh, I was fortunate enough to get to know uh, Sheikh Muhammad when he first moved to the uh, US uh, the early uh, 2000s and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, attend the very first lecture that he ever gave um, after he came back from uh, Medina and I was fortunate enough to also see the very first course uh, that he gave in uh, uh, in the U.S. in Al Maghrib when the Al Maghrib first uh, started. There are so many lessons, in my opinion, that could be learned from the life of Sheikh Muhammad. But one of the most important ones is that uh, if you know Sheikh Muhammad, you know that um, he's a very uh, truthful person. Um, he says what he uh, believes. Uh, if you have uh, something that needs to be fixed, he will tell you straight up that you need to do uh, such and such. If he feels that something is not going to work out, he will tell you tell you straight up that it's not going to um, work out. And I feel that uh, um, you know that having this uh, truthfulness in our relationships is something that is. Uh, that is needed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are um, among those who are truthful. Another thing that we can always uh, remember Sheikh Muhammad for is that 
Alhamdulillah, Allah bless me with writing a little article about him uh, in Arabic in hopes that the Arabic speaking um, da'wa um, uh, brothers and sisters will will make dua for Sheikh Muhammad. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin, it was published today in one of the magazines uh, here in the Arab world. Uh, one of the things that Sheikh Muhammad uh, was always calling people for is uh, is dua. And I don't know of any da'ya around me from the not Western du'at or the Arabic speaking du'at who, uh, you know, was so creative in, in engaging people in, uh, in du'a. And subhanAllah, I always said to myself, if there is one thing that we should be doing now for Sheikh Muhammad, it's the only thing that will uh, help him uh, in his grave. And that is the thing that he used to call us to do, which is uh, uh, to make du'a. And the more du'a we make for him, the more, inshallah ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal um, will protect him. And the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah Azza wa Jal will shower him with his mercy and with his forgiveness and raise uh, his ranks. Because indeed, no one knows what is going to happen to them. Uh, we learn this from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who says that I am the messenger of Allah and I don't know what's going to happen to me. And, uh, but we can always hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers uh, his servants with his mercy. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepts our testimony uh, for Sheikh Muhammad and, uh, and for others uh, who are alhamdulillah like him, uh, who are uh, doing uh, goodness for people. Uh, like the Prophet وسلم, said that Antum fi ard, that you are the ones who uh, will uh, testify, those who will uh, give testimony uh, um, uh, to others. Uh, so we hope that inshallah ta'ala with all these people saying so beautiful things about, so many beautiful things about Shaykh Muhammad and they were all inshallah ta'ala truthful in our testimony that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise uh, the ranks of Sheikh Muhammad in uh, in paradise. One of the things that stand out about Sheikh Muhammad for me is how he was able to um, uh, how he was able to uh, have so many skills. Like I remember the first uh, poster that he made. Uh, I believe he used uh, imagine someone using Photoshop. Uh, uh, 20 years ago or knowing about Illustrator or InDesign or any of these things and he's at the same time uh, a da'i, a graduate of Medina Hafidh al-Quran so, but if it is needed, Sheikh Muhammad was there he will he will learn it like I remember um, a couple of years ago or so he told me that he's attending a course on uh, how to take like professional pictures or something utilizing your phone and he was sending me different uh, pictures and uh, and so on and so forth his incredible knowledge in uh, uh, social media marketing and so forth, which was a very strong, and it is a very strong tool uh, for us to deliver the message uh, of Islam. Um, the fact that he was a uh, an amazing, you know, reader and uh, he loved listening to audiobooks. Every once in a while, uh, he would share with me a beautiful book that he uh, listened to. And I remember one time he told me today. Uh, I listened to this entire book in one day, and I think it was like uh, we needed like eight hours or something like that to listen to that book. Uh, so he was a person who definitely had so many skills, but he also worked uh, on building, you know, these skills that he needed for his dunya success as well as his uh, uh, hereafter success. Uh, there are so many things uh, to be said about uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, but if there is one advice that I will uh, like to advise myself and all of you guys with is to just make dua for him because your duas uh, for him will matter and uh, it was narrated that uh, a parent will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment uh, why is it that I have you know you have been elevated all of these levels and it would be said to them it's because of the dua of your uh, children for you that Allah forgives you. So definitely as our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, taught us 
that a dua ulahum, yani dua for parents will always help. But also the dua of the general, uh, you know, uh, people who love you, uh, who care about you, and so forth, will definitely um, help you. Uh, so this is the biggest thing that we can do now for uh, Sheikh Muhammad. Another thing is that, and I know that uh, Al Maghrib team and the the Discover You team and so forth are going to work on, is spreading the uh, the message um, that uh, Sheikh Muhammad. Um, you know, uh, cared for and uh, beautifully uh, crafted. Uh, so, if there is any way to uh, promote more of the courses that Sheikh Muhammad gave and so forth, I think that this would be a great, uh, you know, continuous sadaqa, continuous uh, charity for Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, as our sister uh, Razi Abzahallah Khair, who also had a great impact on the, uh, the establishment of. Uh, New Muslim Academy to the point uh, that actually one of the students said and he sent me that email he told me that uh, when I have a child I'm going to name her if I have a daughter I'm going to name her Razia and he did have a, a, a baby daughter and he sent me her picture and he did name her uh, Razia mashallah he said because then the the emails that I get they always remind me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this name reminded me of Allah uh, so Jazakallah khair also sister Razi for uh, the uh, the help that and the contributions that you uh, gave at one point to New Muslim Academy um, there are so many things that could be said about uh, Sheikh Muhammad again and uh, one of the things the qualities subhanAllah that stand out for me is how he made sure that everyone around him feel close to him and this is such a beautiful prophetic sunnah uh, that we find absent like as a matter of fact many times uh, we maybe intentionally make people feel that this person is special okay but you are you know this far away from me or something like that but Sheikh Muhammad had this unbelievable ability to make everyone around him feel that they are close to him uh, and subhanAllah, everyone now who's speaking about Sheikh Muhammad, they will mention, you know, some kind of an incident, some type of, some type of a, uh, a, a, a situation or so uh, that, is, uh, th that shows that this person was uh, an, an intimate person. This was, person was uh, a person who made you feel uh, that you are uh, special, that you are worthy of his, you know, attention, of his uh, sincere advice. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, we can just uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives his sins, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his mercy upon him, that Allah azawajal makes him from the um, people of paradise. He definitely inspired so many people uh, to shoot high when they have goals and to pray to Allah azawajal uh, for the highest uh, of the highest uh, of places in paradise. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepted his uh, uh, dua and that uh, that he's from the people uh, of the highest levels in uh, Jannah al Firdaus. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, pour patience upon the family uh, of Sheikh uh, Muhammad. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad was a person who was incredibly close uh, to his wife and to his kids. I don't remember a time that I met Sheikh Muhammad except that he would uh, mention uh, his wife. Uh, subhanallah, and this is definitely a sign of love. Uh, as Sheikh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentions, uh, he says, when you love someone, you will mention them a lot. And that is why if you love Allah Azza wa Jalla, you will constantly mention Allah Azza wa Jalla. But even in human relationships, when we love someone, we will mention him uh, a lot. So we, as may be people who know Sheikh Muhammad uh, very closely, we know that he's a person who loved his uh, uh, his wife, he's a person who loved his uh, family, uh, so we could just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants them uh, patience and that uh, the real life is going to be in the hereafter, uh, in paradise, in a place where no one uh, is going to uh, die, no one will experience death, uh, it's going to be an everlasting bliss. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, unite them again uh, in paradise, uh, that they see him again in, uh, in Jannah. Uh, خالدين فيها uh, staying there forever. Zakmullah khair for giving me this uh, opportunity to share 
uh, a few words about uh, a dear friend and, and a close brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so glad that sound worked out. Um, that's so beautiful. Sheikh Yusuf played a very special part and had a special part in Sheikh Muhammad's life and Alhamdulillah connecting him to Agni Muslim Academy and the incredible work that they do. Alhamdulillah. Um, now we have, inshallah, Sheikh Hasid Noor uh, with us who's going to share a few words. Salaam, Sheikh Hasid. Salaam, how are you? Alhamdulillah, good to have you. And you know, we're looking forward to hearing and seeing Sheikh Muhammad through your eyes and mashallah, the relationship and experiences that you had with him. Um, this Friday, uh, I gave a khutbah in the MCC community uh, here in San Diego. Um, and the khutbah was called Legacy of Knowledge, uh, a tribute to Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. And I remember um, I was uh, I was just doing khutbah al hajj Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiruhu. And he's the one that we learned that from, literally. Uh, the initial khutbah that, that the Prophet ﷺ would give in, in Jum'ah and how to do it properly. And, um, you know, there's, there's one thing to, to, to know somebody and then there's another to, for that person to have been your teacher. And I was, the first thing I said to Ammar, uh, Shukri, and I reached out to Bilal Khan, I reached out to... Uh, some of the other students who were some of the very older students and they have they were with Sheikh Muhammad even from the very, very beginning um, and throughout the years. Um, and, and and the only thing I said to him, I said, Wallah, this man impacted who we are today. Uh, it is no doubt that we are from the fruits of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif and, and our other teachers uh, who were al-Maghrib instructors before us. Uh, the likes of Sheikh Yasser Qali, Sheikh Wareed, uh, Sheikh Hassan Barjas, Sheikh Kamal. I mean, these are our teachers. We we benefited from them, and this is something, unfortunately, in our time today, where everyone is trying to make a name for themselves. And and one thing that, Alhamdulillah, we benefited from them is the humility to know and recognize your teachers and to always give them that respect. It is very very powerful to remember not just the things that you learn, but to attach those memories to them, and they're permanently ingrained in your mind. I remember when I was asked by uh, Noor and Ali to become an Al-Maghrib instructor and they said that you're going to be filling some big shoes. And uh, I said, don't tell me you're going to make me do a uh, history of the Khulafa and the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, The two classes that Sheikh Muhammad uh, uh, taught and made me fall in love with history, made me love fall in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's seerah and uh, the Khulafa al-Rashidin. It was this, it was this uh, class that he taught. So they asked me to, to teach those classes and I said, first and foremost, it'll never be the same, of course. Um, you, can't, you cannot replicate Sheikh Muhammad uh, in those classes. And every single person who's taken those classes and taken my class, they know that there's a huge difference in the terms of... Um, we're, we're, of course, two different styles, but the way he presented it and made you fall in love with the people and the stories as if you knew them is, is something irreplicable, of course. And um, I remember a number of things that I just want you all to understand how this deen, when it is taught the way Sheikh Muhammad taught it, it makes you understand its reality. It makes you love Islam from an experiential perspective that is that is more priceless than if you were to spend a thousand years reading a million books or if you were to spend a thousand books just reading them but experiential reality is something that Sheikh Muhammad Sharif rahimahullah ta'ala taught me made me love Islam by and that is also his love and something that I I taught in my class with al-Maghrib and this is a line that some of my students actually wrote on a on a on a mug and gave it to me and it's something I really really cherish and that's learn history with your tears and your love and Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif rahimahullah ta'ala is the one who taught us that he was he was one of my first teachers from all of my teachers before Medina before anyone who taught us the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the love of the of the Sahaba and the Ahlul Bayt with his tears and with his love I mean uh, 
it's it's very very difficult for you to find people like that that are that genuine that when they talk about the ones that they love it it's that passion that drives the teaching um and i remember i told him two things and subhanallah allah willed it that i would be the one that would do those two things that i i suggested to him uh, and i said sheikh muhammad why don't we teach the seela on site and he said, that's an amazing idea and then subhanallah allah willed it that i would go to medina and i would, I would you know try to dedicate my life to try to teach this, the seat of the prophet sallam, on site and that's still a work in project of course um and i also told him i said sheikh muhammad you know you should you should do like a conference where everyone from al maghrib can just log on and listen to you on like a teletron He's like, that's a good idea. And subhanAllah, that, that eventually happened with, with Ilmfest. And subhanAllah, on neither of those projects where he, he motivated us with his passion, with his, with his drive, he himself was never part of those two things. But he built what he always taught us, and that is something I want to leave you all with, is the drive and passion to serve this ummah. Is that is the one thing that I can take from this man, and I can safely say, subhanAllah, that... That is more important sometimes the books that you read and the sciences that you study. And, you know, he always taught this one thing, this pipelines of ajr. What are you going to leave behind when, when you leave this earth? What are the pipelines of charity, the sadaqa jariya that you're going to leave behind? What is the legacy you're going to leave behind? And subhanAllah, that stuck in my heart. Because that was the first thing he taught and that's the last thing he taught. That, that's, that's the first thing he would try to infusing you is that you have such a huge potential to serve this ummah and to serve to serve all all muslims no matter where you are you're not bound to anyone you're bound to the muslim ummah wherever you are and that kind of power to motivate and he saw the potential in people and he literally that's that's what the prophet was successful and he saw the potential in people and he he built them that's who Sheikh Muhammad Sharif was. I mean, I could sit here forever, right? Or we have, we have five minutes to describe our whole experiences. But I want you to understand something. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions uh, a story between Ma'ruf um, al-Karhi and some others, uh, and al-Balkhi, between two friends. He's like, we've spent so many years together what did you learn from our friendship? And he said, I learned eight things. And he, he actually listed out eight things that he learned from that particular friend. And with Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, you can literally list out, these are the specific lessons I learned from this man. And you can spend an hour each. I'm Sheikh, Sheikh Yasser Burja starting, and Ammar al-Shukri, and, and Irtiza Hassan, and Danish, and, and Daniel, and Noor, and uh, I, I mean, you can start naming every, everybody who, who, who was, who's been with Sheikh Muhammad for a very, very long time. And of course, every single volunteer and every single, single student that, that taught with him, Siraj, uh, in Chicago, and so on and so forth. I mean, there, there's so many people that everyone has that deeply ingrained lessons that you learn from Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, which made him a true teacher. If, if I can just... Uh, you know, leave off with one last thing, and that is that the life of the of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif teach us, really, you don't have much time on this earth. We spend so much time on the things that we could do without and don't give priorities on the things that we cannot live without. And then we also have not spent time leaving pipelines of ajr. But Sheikh Muhammad, literally, when he, when he was in Medina, that, that, those were his thoughts. And he lived his life like that. And one of the most important things, which I'm chill, still trying to master, is it's, it's very, very difficult. And help you to succeed in doing that is to just avoid every single thing that will not benefit you. <laughs> right? This is the hadith of the Prophet and from the goodness of a person's Islam that they leave that which does not concern them. Shaykh Muhammad never liked talking about nonsense. And Shaykh Muhammad also, he taught us and ingrained in us he hated if somebody were to be mentioned in front of him, like in terms of gossip or slander or something like that. It was like, this was the worst thing ever. He hated it. He would, he would, he would speak out against it. And he would immediately, if anybody even was close to something like that, he would change the topic or chastise them. 
and he lived that. And you know, these are just some some lessons off the top of my head. But somebody who deeply impacted us to who we are today. How how can you even begin to to thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the good things that He has done? We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant him forgiveness, shower him with mercy, and to gather us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I honestly, genuinely believe when I when I heard that Sheikh Muhammad passed away in Dubai and he's going to be buried in in uh, in Dubai, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Uh, that his his rank is almost as if like you're being buried in Mecca and Medina. I, I honestly believe that because for a person to love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi so much, there was a wisdom for him to be buried there, for people to uh, come from all over the world make du'a for him. And then I will leave you all with one last thing. I don't know if it has been mentioned already or not, but there was somebody that saw him uh, in their dream on Fajr, on the day of his janazah. And they said, uh, what happened to you, Muhammad? And in, in essence, basically, they said that he was with the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Salihin. This is the last ayah that the Prophet ﷺ recited before he left this earth. He, he, he went before us. And no doubt we have a lot to do and, and shoes to fill. Um, but... I, I just remember the last lesson, which is what my teachers taught when they lost their own family member. Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar al Shaqiti was, interestingly enough, the teacher of Sheikh Muhammad and also my teacher in Medina. And he, subhanAllah, when his mother passed away, he still came to class and he still taught. And one of the most ba powerful things um, he said when he was there, we know how much he loved his mother. He said that I, I, co I couldn't imagine how the Sahaba felt when the Prophet ﷺ had passed away. And that made me come here today to continue that legacy. And that's the same thing we say to about Shaykh Muhammad. I mean, there's nothing we can say to, to, to maybe give solace to some of that except to the idea that we're passing on his legacy by teaching what he taught us. May Allah subhanahu wa bless him and gather us with al Habib alayhi salatu wa salam and his family and the righteous and our teachers and our, and our families. And allow us to really be nation builders like him. One nation builder passed, but I hope thousands, inshallah, if not millions, uh, were raised on those, the shoulders of those, of that giant. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Haseeb. Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, and I mean to those was thousands of nation builders, inshallah, and all of you who are present, you know, make that intention. Um, that you will continue and you will give your excuses, that black guy. Alhamdulillah. Um, next, we have Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya. Alhamdulillah, we're so happy to have him on. He's been with Al Makhli for many years and has had a you know, beautiful relationship with Sheikh Muhammad. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdul Bari, for being with us. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'll hand it over to you. I want to hear, you know, see Sheikh Muhammad through your eyes. Jazakallah khair for putting uh, all this together. Uh, for the last few um, days, I, I'm pretty much at a loss for words, but I. Uh, I, I'm one of the, I think I am the last speaker, but so I wanted to start from the beginning when I first um, met Sheikh Muhammad. He was uh, he was sitting behind me and he tapped my shoulders and this was the break between the classes. And he said, Abdul Zari? How would you like to work for me? I said, what are you talking about? I said, who are you? What are you talking about? I, I barely knew him. It's like he's trying to, he's trying to um, ask me if he, I would like to work for him. Like he's a student. He just got to, he just arrived in Medina. Um, just like myself. Like, and uh, then he mentioned, he said, you know, there are a lot of people out there in the West that don't that don't have access, don't have the time to seek knowledge. They can't come over to Medina like us. I mean, we've been blessed to be able to come here, but there are millions and millions of others that are studying. They're busy with college with work how can we reach those people i want to start um 
I think he mentioned an evening class. That was the start of evening class to provide to to just give an opportunity for those who have busy lives to take away from their regular schedule to devote themselves to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I looked at him and I said, whatever, you know, like whatever. So from the very beginning, subhanAllah, he was taking notes and I know that the notes that he was taking, it wasn't something, it wasn't, they weren't notes about the class or, you know, the Arabic class that we were in at that time. He was planning. He was so far ahead. He was so far ahead. He was always thinking. And he was already thinking about, okay, where can I find teachers? <laughs> and subhanAllah, we're barely learning Arabic and he's trying to recruit, trying to start Al Maghrib Institute already. Uh, he was, he was an amazing person. He always made you, he always inspired you to be the best version of yourself. Sometimes he would rub you the wrong way. But it was because you were on the wrong way most of the time. That's why. And he rubbed many people the wrong way, maybe. Maybe they felt, but, they, you know, people are sometimes, uh, you know, when, you, when you're a visionary, you bring change and... You and you're you're trying to help others, and uh, anytime you come up with something different, something unique, you're always gonna have people who object to it. But he believed, and he made du'a. It shows the power of du'a. You, you would always see him raising his hands, supplicating to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala all the time. Um. You and not you could see that he was always thinking, he was always planning. He was someone that tried not just to not just to try to change change just maybe a, a small community or a group of people, but he wanted to benefit as many people as he could. And one of the lessons, uh, one of the things that I learned from him is to always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put you in a place that you can benefit the most people so that you can leave a legacy for yourself. And it's befitting that Sheikh Hasib mentioned earlier that about his passing away in Medina. And it's befitting because he, at Dubai, in Dubai, his passing away in Dubai, Dubai is... <laughs> is is where the East and the West right now in modern in the modern world it's where the East and the West meets and uh, in cl in class in Medina he you know there were really there are a lot of good teachers and they had a lot of knowledge but he was thinking you know we need to, we need to do something to try to help these teachers to also be the best that they can be. They have a lot of knowledge, but maybe, you know, that the method that they were using maybe wasn't the best method, he thought. Um, and he was thinking, uh, he was, he, he wasn't just, you know, he was, he was always, like I mentioned, many years ahead of us, uh, always thinking ahead. And you'd always, uh, he, I think many, many people um, before me have spoken that he would always make you feel comfortable. You were always comfortable with it. Um, he always made you feel like you were his best friend. Um, and everybody felt that way. Just like this is how the, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And that's why we, when you lose a giant like that, someone who's so influential, the Ummah has lost a giant. But you know, he's, alhamdulillah, he's left so much. And I feel like, you know, our actions and, and everything that we do is a, is a continuation of, of his work. And it, it, inspi it inspires us, motivates us to do even more. Uh, one thing that he was able to do that even now seems almost impossible is to bring all of these duads, scholars, 
um, Alhamdulillah, you know, the scholars are, uh, so, you know, there are so many amazing scholars uh, all over the place. But it's hard to bring people together, it's especially even in our community, even in the United States of America. It's hard to unite people and to bring people together. But through our Maghrib, he was able to bring the scholars together. These were people who, you know, they, they were in, in places where they, of course, are very, very respected and so forth. And it's hard to bring and unite so many people that have so much influence. And alhamdulillah, he was able to do that to help, to, to, to make everyone the best version of themselves. And, uh, and he, all I can say is, you know, he just continued to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises his status amongst the pious and the righteous in the hereafter and enter him the highest level in paradise. And to continue to, to be inspired by, uh, by what he did, but at the same time, um, to, to, to always give it your all, to be the best, to do the best that you can, um, to be the best that you can be every single day to improve yourself. Uh, I think everyone who met him, uh, met him and talked to him and learned from him, they became a better person. They became a better person and they became a better version of themselves. And that's the type of person that he was. He, he was genuine, he was sincere. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the deeds. And I really, I, there's so many stories, there's so many things that I can also say. Um, five, of course, five minutes is not enough, but um, mm -hmm. I just leave it at that. And I think um, I will continue to speak about him also, though. Mm -hmm. Those are both to me because he was such an inspiration for me. Uh, and I'm sure for the Ummah also. He made, it, he made a big difference in my life and the lives of so many people who are very influential. And we ask Allah to accept that. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Abdul Bari Yahya. And Alhamdulillah, you know, even for all the students, I think it's a beautiful message. Continue speaking about Shaykh Muhammad, the impact he had on you. Um, you know, that's such a beautiful, important part of grieving and allows you to connect and reflect on the lessons that you all have. So Jazakallah khair for sharing with us and being here with us, alhamdulillah. Um, we have Sheikh Mohammed Faki also on with us who wants to share a few words and alhamdulillah we were able to get you all, get you on. Sheikh Mohammed, welcome. Um, and inshallah, you know, we're looking forward to hearing a few words from you as well. Oh, we can't hear you, Sheikh. Um, We've had, there's been few sound issues today. It seems like when people first join, there's no sound. Are you able to check your settings? If not, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Um, so if your sound's not working, um, try leaving the session, hopping back on. That seems to have been working, but um, just double check your settings. If maybe the mic, if you have anything else plugged in. Okay, I'll just wait till we get some sound. If you just check your audio settings. So we'll just wait, uh, inshallah, till Sheikh Mohammed can just get his audio settings. Um, but alhamdulillah, many of you sharing that you learned how to make dua from Sheikh Mohammed Al Sharif. And for those of you that never got to experience visionary, take visionary, and you're wondering, you know, what do you mean? You learn how to make dua. It, it wasn't about going through the motions of dua, but really understanding what the power of dua and what your life can look like when you connect with the power of dua. So alhamdulillah. Yeah. Sam. There we go. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sister Razia, for having me and for putting this webinar together. My name is Muhammad Faqih. My alias is Muhammad Ibn Faqih, the way it's spelled. Um, and that was Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif's uh, recommendation. May Allah have mercy on him. 
Subhanallah, I'm uh, I'm still whenever I mention his name, uh, and it has happened several times over the past few days, that I would still say like Hafizullah, and then I have to remind myself that now we say Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy on all of us. Um, but uh, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Wassalamu ala Rasulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First of all, my condolences. To the entire global, um, you know, Muslim community, be it affiliated with Maghrib, if you are affiliated with the Maghrib Institute or not, uh, because I think Sheikh Muhammad's influence went beyond the Al Maghrib family or uh, people who are affiliated with the Maghrib. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have mercy on him. Um, and I wanted to uh, start where Sheikh Abdul Bari, the person before me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, left off. And Sheikh Abdul Bari, uh, the person that introduced me to Sheikh Abdul Bari was Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. Um, uh, about in 2005, late uh, 2005 or mid-2005, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif came to um, my business that I was running. It's a family business. And he looked around, he came, and then he told me, why don't you leave this and join me? I was like, you? <laughs> and Sheikh Muhammad, and subhanAllah, those who uh, knew Sheikh Muhammad closely, you all know that he spoke big, but he also acted big. He dreamt big, he was big. And subhanAllah, his departure uh, was big. And I asked Allah Azza wa Jal to admit him to a place that is as vast as the heavens and the earth uh, and the highest. Um, so Sheikh Muhammad convinced me to join him. And when I asked him who has on his team, and I had the night before welcomed him and Sheikh Yasir Brijas, he told me Yasir Brijas uh, along with Sheikh Abdul Bari. So Sheikh Abdul Bari was the third person to join the team. Um, and then I was the fourth person later that year uh, Sheikh Yasir Qadi joined us. So, uh, and the five of us had the first meeting uh, later that year uh, in, in the city that I ended up moving to, in the city of Memphis, where we set up the first Al Maghrib curriculum. A lot of people don't know this part of the history. But during that time, um, you know, and I had known Sheikh Muhammad briefly before that, two years. So it's altogether 20 years. And when you are around someone for that long, uh, you're, it's no longer an impression. Your opinion of them is not an impression because you can see a pattern or, you know, and when you spend time with someone, you travel with someone, you uh, room with someone and you um, spend time doing uh, different types of activities, you know, professional activities um, in your own profession, leisure, acts of worship. Sheikh Muhammad was my roommate uh, in in Hajj, uh, I think 2007 or something like that. Um, him and I, along with our dear brother, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, Mustafa Khalifa, um, one of the former emirs of Al-Maghrib, you know, um, we, we were together. So when you're with someone for that long and you see them in different settings, you do different activities with them your opinion of them is not one of just um like a very superficial impression it's rather um something that comes out of a deep connection and an observation over a long period of time and there isn't really um we don't have enough time to really tell you everything that um i i know about sheikh muhammad and why this man was one of the greatest people of our time uh, and i'm not exaggerating uh, when you look at the amount of people who are mourning his departure and his death, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. And when you look at what is being said about him, we cannot all just be reacting to this. You know, it has been three days and many of us are not over it. And um, many of us are not going to be over it for a long time. I don't want to be over it. If you, if, um, if you want me to tell the truth, um, I want, just like his life was a sort of inspiration, for me, I want his uh, death also to be a source of inspiration so that we could, uh, inshallah, do our best 
uh, as he always wanted uh, wanted us. He always demanded the best of himself, and he demanded the best of everyone around him. And one of the greatest qualities that he had is the fact that he was very accommodating. Like he will he will accept the best you have to offer, even if he knew that you have potential to do better. He will accept the the, the best that you could do and help you excel or do do better if you are willing to give the time and put the effort. If not, then he would accept you as, as you are. And this is why everyone who worked closely with him felt special, right? And this is actually a prophetic quality, right? The Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, used to, and he actually learned that from a very um, influential um, um, mentor or, or, or leader that used to possess this quality, who was also an old, you know, friend and mentor of mine as well. So one thing a lot of people don't know, Muhammad and I, our connection began, you know, began in the uh, you know, DC, Maryland uh, area. Um, it was again, very superficial connection, uh, but it didn't really solidify until he approached me in 2005 and asked me to join what he used to call the dream team. Um, and I joined it and I wish I had spent more time and i wish i had uh put everything else on hold to fully dedicate myself to this but there is that one unique story that maybe this is the, the place to to share um that uh, you know again chef Muhammad and i have a lot of special connections or at least i have a lot of special connections with him but one of these connections was um when he took a walk in the city of ottawa in a park and a lot of you may have heard this story, but you don't know who the person uh, who was at the center of that story was, Sheikh Muhammad. I heard in many of his seminars, he, he talked about this particular person. So Sheikh Muhammad takes me on a walk and then I'm talking to him. And then he asked me, you know, um, as to why I, um, you know, I don't have children. My wife and I had been married for seven or eight years at that point. And I told him, I mean, it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're accepting it. He's like, are you making dua? I'm like, yeah, I'm making dua. He's like, are you making dua the way you're supposed to make dua? I'm like, yeah, you know, we can, I can always learn from you. You tell me. And he shared personal story with me. And then he said, you know, why don't you just, you know, close your eyes and visualize and imagine uh the boy that you would want to have like the son that you would want to have and what he would look like and or the daughter and he made me imagine both and he was like um you know we went through this activity and he's like you know what now you make your dua let's both make dua we both made dua and then later that day we uh, went for dinner and then he took me to a mall and uh in that mall uh he took me to a gaps store and he's like, why don't you buy something? I was like, yeah, I wanted to buy something for my wife. He's like, also for your children. I was like, I don't have children, Muhammad. He's like, you know what I mean? You know, buy something for a boy and a girl. I was like, okay. So I picked two things. And when I when it was time for me to pay for it, he insisted that he would pay. He held me, you know, we had a little, um, uh, we had a little fight right there physically. And then when he overpowered me and he, and he insisted, um, so I said, no, I'm not going to take uh, two sets. So it was two sets back in the days when uh, blue was for boys, pink was for girls, and it was totally okay. So I returned the pink one, which is something that I ended up regretting. And I said, I'm just going to have, I'm just going to take one. So I took one blue set with me. And when I went home and my wife saw it, it was like, what is this? I said, you know, Hamid Sharif made me do this. He's like, you and your friend. I was like, khair inshallah, uh, subhanallah. Two years later, um, my son Ahmed uh, wore that for his first Eid when he was one month old. Um, the only thing that um, I, I wish I had done was to uh, have taken that second set, which was pink for my daughter, Maymuna. So not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with one child, he actually blessed me with a twin. And what is uh, amazing, and that maybe Sheikh Muhammad Sharif himself didn't know, both of them, in terms of their physical appearance, they turned to be exactly the way I imagined them, right? Uh, so, so Alhamdulillah, I mean, 
uh, every time I, I, ever since, every time I see them and I look at them, uh, I remember Sheikh Mohammed and what we have done. So, and I'm sure there are you know, tons of people who will tell you stories like this, especially he, he touched many people in, 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 in his special way. Last thing I wanted to say, inshallah ta'ala, and I'll conclude is that um, to me, uh, I, I want, just like his life was a source of inspiration, that his death to be also uh, a death of inspiration. May he be in a better place. Um, let's, let's strive to be the best we can be, as he always wanted, uh, wanted for us. Let's uh, take his vision and his mission to the next level. Let's excel in our own personal, personal lives. And never forget uh, our chief, uh, our beloved Muhammad al-Sharif, who inspired uh, all of us. And he was able to bring um, together you know, a community, a community of people, made of people who are so special with whom we all have you know, great connections and, and, and memories together that we owe to this, to this very fine man. Last, last but not least, Muhammad lived his life of urgency, urgency. Um, and uh, it was a very purposeful life. Uh, he, I, I personally know that he used to hold himself accountable. Every day he would go over what he has done and, talk, and write down, he literally, like he always pushed me, like write down, you know, things that, you know, you, that you learn every day, at least thing. And he kept journals and I'm sure that they're full of uh, gems May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul. So, um, you know, um, so I'm hoping, inshallah ta'ala, that we can keep keep his legacy um, on and continue to pray for him and never forget it, get uh, the things that he's done for us and other people. So may Allah have mercy on our beloved brother, friend, mentor, inspiration, leader, chief, beloved Muhammad al-Sharif. And that story is a visionary staple that many of the students have heard over the years. So it's so beautiful to know that. SubhanAllah, that was your story. May Allah kind of bless you and your family. JazakAllah khair. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, um, we have our final speaker, uh, someone who is very dear to Sheikh Muhammad and had a very, uh, alhamdulillah, special close relationship and a very big hand also in Al Maghrib. Um, Sheikh Walid Basuni and Alhamdulillah Sheikh Walid is going to share inshallah some reflections. He's also going to do a closing glass. So I really encourage everyone, um, you know, bring others on, stay on for that. And we're going to have that with Sheikh Walid. Jazakallah khair Sheikh Walid for being here with us. Oh, Sheikh Walid, I can't hear you. Uh, Sheikh Walid, we can't hear you. Are you able to hear me? Are you able? No, we can't. We still can't hear you. Um, maybe try leaving and rejoining, Shay. So let's, we'll just wait a second, inshallah, as Shay Khalid um, tries rejoining. But alhamdulillah, uh, you know, those of you that have been sharing in the chat, I've been reading some of your comments and you know, connecting with the stories. Um, Alhamdulillah, you know, so many of the instructors sharing certain stories and you're like, I remember Sheikh mentioning that in a class or in a session and, you know, kind of gives you, Alhamdulillah, that personal touch and that behind the scenes of what was going on. And he, you know, he was, it, it didn't matter where you were at, if you were an instructor, if you were just a student, you were just kind of passing by. He, um, you know, SubhanAllah, he never failed to inspire you in some way or another, Alhamdulillah. You're... Are you there, Shay? Okay, uh, we still can't hear you. No, not. Um, do you, okay, we'll just wait a second, inshallah. Uh, as Shaykh Walid sets that sound up. Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, one of the other things that when we're talking about inspiration, I know a lot of you have been asking, you know, what happens now with um, some of the projects, obviously the organizations, institutions that Shaykh Muhammad set up. I really want to reassure you that um, his legacy continues. Alhamdulillah, the way that Sheikh Muhammad had set up his organizations, had set up the work that he very much, the vision he had for them was not dependent on him. 
And that was a testament to Mashallah, his leadership and his vision for things. And so his work and his legacy very much continues. Um, so, you know, please take that as a, as a comfort, as a reassurance that Alhamdulillah, you'll see, um, you know, his energy, his inspiration throughout uh, the things as we move forward, be it with Al Maghrib, with Discover You. Alhamdulillah, we're blessed that he, he was that visionary leader who set that up and, you know, things don't fall apart um, because of it. And for those of you that took Nishro, you know what, what I'm talking about, you know, mashallah, he really preached that, he taught that to other students as well. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And, um, you know, in the coming days, as you're still going through that grief process, I'd really encourage you continue channeling that through dua, right? Continue channeling that, channeling that by reading Fatiha for him, inshallah. Um, take those moments to connect with other students, you know, that you had in programs and the classes you took together. Utilize that community because that's what was incredible with Shaykh Muhammad. Um, mashallah, he, he always made sure that the community was part of the work that we did. But, you know, part of any class, any program we had, community was an integral part. He understood, alhamdulillah, um, our deen, you know, incorporates that jama. And so he would, mashallah, make sure that that, that was, you know, there for students to facilitate for us to be able to have those opportunities to connect students. And so I really encourage you. I know a lot of you, mashallah, have been speaking to one another, um, alhamdulillah, being, you know, that means of comfort for one another so continue doing that and you know that's really a beautiful place and again we've created that facebook group um that honors his legacy and is an opportunity for students who came were impacted by his work in any way to come join inshallah you know share your reminders we've got a beautiful post there that was shared today of you know share your favorite quote like your that you know something you hold on to um of the impact of sheikh muhammad's work and so alhamdulillah that is something I'd encourage you to join in. It's a really beautiful way to, again, have that collective grief as well. Um, alhamdulillah. And people who even said that, you know, I never took his class. I followed him on social media. And just through that, like, I loved his energy. I loved his hope. A lot of you saying that, you know, he wasn't uh, what you imagined as that traditional sheikh. He, he was known for his smile, his lightheartedness, um, his, you know, blunt humor at times, alhamdulillah. And I think that that's what was really special. Alhamdulillah. There we are. Can you can can you no, hear me? We can't shake. Oh, not we yet. have sound. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, no, we do. We have sound. Oh. Oh. Can you hear me? Uh, we can, but actually, just as you took the earpods off, we had sound. I'm. Okay, so now you can hear me. Yes, I can. Okay. Oh. Okay. Alhamdulillah. All right, go ahead, Sheikh Walid. I'll hand it to you. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, yarfa illahu al-lina utu al-ilma darajat. Allah will elevate our faithful and raise those who knowledge. Uh, uh, he will elevate the means in Jannah, in Dunya, in this uh, as well. And Allah is all aware of what you do. There is so many things He is aware of what we know others aware of. And Allah has for the person in the Akhirah away the Dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make and anything that we expect or we and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their level as he is raising their level on the dunya. Don't uh, do they not we gradually re from its borders, which is this is being brought up. It's actually because how the earth shrank, which has happened. He said, the, the jurors, the folk. Sorry, and, yeah. the, the sound is really, um, the, if the connection's weak, it keeps breaking up. 
I just want to, because we really want to uh, hear you fully. Let me, let me sound or the connection? So it's, I feel like the connection might be okay. I'm not sure it's a sound because it's choppy. So I'm not sure if that's the connection or if it's just okay. your sound. I have an idea. Yeah, the connection seems Can fine. So it might just be the. Okay. Let me use just the one. And, and Shaykh, like when Sheikh, you took your Sheikh earpods Majid, out of. Chef Majid, Sheikh Mohammed said, have a backup plan B. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I do have a plan. Once I told Sheikh Muhammad, I, I don't blab. Uh, and he was like, looked at me. And I said, because the B is more than B. Uh, can you hear me now? Let's do it. Can you hear me? I can. Can you just count to five? I want to make sure. One, one two, three. Test one, two, three. Is it clear? Is it better? It, it it breaks it breaks up like a little bit as you're speaking. Can we try again? Just no. count to ten. One, two, three, seven. <laughs> I will choose. Uh, let me try try my laptop. The laptop will be better than uh, okay. cell phone. Okay, Shay. Because we, we want to hear you fully and clearly, inshallah, and especially because Shaykh Woody is going to do the closing glass. So we really don't want to miss that out. I know I, I was trying to tell him about the ear pods, you guys, but I, I'm not sure if I, I was accurate. So um, let's see. Inshallah, he will join in a couple of minutes and um, he'll get that set up. He's got his backup plan, alhamdulillah. Um, as he said, you know, Shaykh Muhammad would always say have a backup plan. I remember, uh, you know, subhanAllah, you guys, we were actually talking about this as a team yesterday. Just, you know, the, the memories, the small moments that just kind of come up for us right now. And um, this past year, we had a, we had a technical glitch that um, I guess happened on one of our programs. And so, um, you know, some of the students, like they, they ended up, you know, missing some part of it because of the connection. And Sheikh Mohammed felt so bad. Um, and he just like, he, he wouldn't settle, right? Even though they still got to join the program and benefit, um, they still wouldn't settle or he wouldn't settle until so he was like okay guys we're gonna do a second session later today and it was gonna be like i think 6 a.m in the morning for him he had just you know done the session but he's like i want to make up for you know the issue that happened let's set it up we're gonna do a second session it didn't matter that it was like ramadan at 6 a.m for him he was gonna do it a few hours later um because he just like it was he he took so seriously the amana the trust that students put in him and I hope you guys felt that in, in the programs and the classes because, you know, mashallah, when you talk about Ihsan, like and behind the scenes, like so, certain things that you'd be like, really, Shaykh? Like, I think it's okay. You know, students weren't complaining. They were happy. And it was like, no, it's like, we have to, you know, serve them. And I thought like, you know, subhanAllah, as a team, it just, it wasn't him just saying it and like maybe, you know, expecting you to run something like he, mashallah, really elevated the standard of what it was and, you know, expected us to rise to that. And I think that was just so beautiful, like given um, what where he was at. And the other part that um, earlier, I think the first person actually, Sheikh Yasser Ghali, was when he was mentioning about books, um, Sheikh Mohammed never stopped growing. Like he was much at a point, um, you know, where what he had established and at his age, like he, he, you know, he could have walked away if he wanted, but he never stopped investing in his growth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, regularly revising, mashallah, we know he was a hafiz, um, regularly revising the Quran, always, you know, raising again the bar for himself. Many of you who took Dreamwalker know that, mashallah, in the last few years, he established regularly the habit of, you know, being um, in the masjid for, for Jama'ah. And uh, the, inshallah, if you got a chance to watch that video with Sheikh Abu Isa, um, you know, the final place that Sheikh Mohammed was, was actually, you know, in the prayer room with his children, you know, about to pray um, when he, subhanAllah, suffered from his heart attack. And so, you know, he always just had, had this commitment to his growth and he was never above learning. That was the other beautiful part. Um, many times, you know, if you said something or you recommended something, he would kind of probe and ask about that. And that was just so beautiful as well. Um, so, you know, when you're on here, just take, take that step back and ask yourself, like, maybe have I accepted certain status quo or if I kind of thought, well, that ship has sailed for me um, because, you know, alhamdulillah, like he, he, 
we're, we're here as a testament to Marshall, the commitment he had to himself, his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his commitment to constantly um, you know, live in trying to be that best version of himself. And you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and fill his grave with light. And so I, I hope that you guys are connecting with that as well. Um, that you know, he was a he was a man that didn't stop learning at any age. He was um, he had a program called Book Hero, where mashallah he introduced us to the power of audiobooks and then also the art of it, um, which was incredible as well, mashallah. And also, um, you know, his recommendations of books. He he, I'm actually now just realizing that. I'm not going to get any more recommendations from him on books. I would always be like, Shaykh, what are you reading now? You know, what's the next one? And I would send him some of my recommendations and um, I'm, I'm going to miss that. And we're not going to get to pick his brain about that, subhanAllah. Um, alhamdulillah. And, you know, those of you that were part of that Book Hero program, that was really incredible as well, that he would be regularly wanting to just share. Like that, I think that was what was beautiful too, is when he learned something or he mastered something, he couldn't wait to you know, put together a program and help others get on that. So when he, Mashal, started his audiobook journey and really connected um, you know, with like, wow, I can get through you know, 100 books in a year, which is what he had done, Mashal, he was like, we got to have a program. He's like, I want others to have that um, access to knowledge to be able to recognize that you know, oral tradition is actually part of ours. And so he, he developed that program. So that was what was beautiful. A lot of the um, workshops, the classes, you know, the programs he did came from him mastering it, being so passionate about it and wanting others to succeed in it. So, you know, Dream Walker was one of his programs around habit building. And so much like he had had this you know, very successful formula in the way he started going about um, his habits and really changing, you know, incredible shifts in his life in the last five, six years when it came to just like the day to day. And so he wanted to, um, you know, he wanted to teach that to everyone else. He wanted to make sure that others can benefit from it. And so that was so incredible because again, sometimes people collect that knowledge and it is benefiting them. But like I said yesterday, and I'll keep reiterate, reiterating it, he was in the business of investing in people, right? He was in the business of helping people grow. Um, and there's such a testament, alhamdulillah. You know, I, 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 we could probably have sessions for the you know, rest of the month, if not years um, with Mashla, and I hope we do. We'll get to hear from all of you in that Facebook group um, and doing Facebook Lives and, and expressing that as well. Um, one of the things that I know I, I cherish and I'm probably gonna go back and just watch some of those recordings was when Sheikh Mohammed would recite Quran. So Sheikh Yahya has been sharing some videos, but some in, in some of the classes, um, Mashallah, when Sheikh Mohammed would recite Quran and you know, he had such a beautiful heart. There was never a class where he didn't cry. He, he had such a soft heart and whenever he would speak about, you know, some component of the Sita, some component or ayah of the Quran, he never held back from crying and being vulnerable. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam. You're back, alhamdulillah. So Shaykh Muhammad would always make me make him count down one to ten. So, you know, so I want to make sure we get this One, down. two, three, three, four, nine, ten. Shay, please get the end on me. But okay, I think we're good. Hang on, Shay. Your, your sound's not coming. Chopping? Is it? Well, is not clear? Yeah, because I can see your mouth moving and there was no sound. So that's. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's. What's what's going on in Houston, Shafe? What's up with the connection? No. So I'm not hearing anything right now. Inshallah, we are going to, we're going to figure this out, guys, because I have been really looking forward to that closing du'a um, of Sheikh Wadi. So, you know, I'm I'm here. We are not going anywhere. We're going to make this work, Inshallah. We want to have that beautiful collective uh, du'a with Sheikh Wadi, Inshallah. And um, it's, he's probably got a backup plan for his backup plan. So, uh, you know, Sheikh Wadi, Mashallah, is also a man of Hussain. And, he does not play around. 
Yes, Syrah. Um, you know, Sheikh Amar, you're going to hop on. Just help Sheikh Walid get that set up and figured out. Give him, actually, I don't think. Assalamu alaikum. There we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm going to mute my face because there's back one. Because there's back one. Okay. Just if you cannot hear me while you're muting. Okay. Is it good? Come up. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Um, I was saying that uh, Ibn Abbas عنه, said that the reduction you commented in the verse in Surah Al-Ra'd, it means the losses of scholars, uh, jurists, people among us. It's the death of the scholars. Uh, when you see people crying, uh, um, don't be surprised. It's the love in Nabi, his friend when he lost them and in one of the narration of Uthman ibn Mad'un when he died like rain like the fall of the rain uh, over the death of his friends when he prays sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only that we weep for the lost and loved one and the scholars and the people who know that they benefit others that Allah Quran فَمَا بَكَتَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ that the earth and over them. Then Mujahid, um, he said, he was asked, earth and, and, and sky cry. What, what that means? They did not cry. He, he said, ma, ma ta mu'min. When a believer, a good Muslim, a good believer, and the sky will cry, cry over the death of that person. That the earth will cry because, you know, this is a person who used to walk on me, who used to do all this good things not there anymore. And the heavens will cry because it says the record of those things that you have done used to go through me every day, every night. And now it's not going through death. So it is not only that we, we cry over the death of people who once that uh, 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 even as you heard Heard what Ibn Abbas as well. You know, um, I love Ayyub al Sukhtiani. And one of the things I love with this great scholar is among the Tabi'in or among the uh, um, uh, followers, uh, Ayyub al Sukhtiani, he said, Inni ukhbaru bi mawti rajuli. He told about somebody from Ahl al Sunnah who passed away. I feel like I lost part of me. How it feels when you know. Someone who is upon khair, upon sunnah, upon goodness, that if you lost part of your, of your one of your limbs, and can Yahya bin Jafit up to me, I would give from my own life, like if I live a hundred years or six, give some of my life for Muhammad ibn Ismail al Bukhari. I will donate my life to his if that's possible. Why? Because the death of Muhammad. Al Bukhari will affect the life of this person, will benefit so many more than me. And Radiallahu Anhu Rahima was so in tears, crying, Umar Radiallahu Anhu died. And he was asked, Why are you, dying? Why are you crying so much like Ki Umar? I'm crying over the death of Umar Radiallahu Anhu wa Arda. The death of Umar was crying so much to the extent that said his tears neither of his of him wet you know and he said Umar was like a castle protection the wall that protected Islam whoever entered this wall is protected not protected uh, uh, we as we weep and we cry death of Muhammad and other great scholars and and da'iyas and seed of knowledge a great influence on our good influence on our community we should always understand that this is in one, one person the ummah of Muhammad وسلم, the ulama is not one and the must spread good, goodness and the activists and good, good and the uh, people who spread goodness and give the ummah will never be lost by the death of someone if it would it would 
been lost after or Abu Bakr or Umar, but it didn't. Al Ummah is filled with great people, Alhamdulillah, the generation replacing one, one another. You know, many slaves by another scholars. When Abu Hanifa died 150, a Shafi was born 150. Another, when he saw some of the companion crying over the rumor that Muhammad was killed, and what Anas ibn another said, he said, Don't cry, stand up and go fight. And the Prophet died upon. As we, yes, have tears today, but we tell ourselves and we'll continue in the path of this good man. Uh, uh, this Ummah will never die by the death of its great men or great women. Actually, it is the death, I always believe that death is the for life. It, be, best way to to value life is to think about death. The value of, of its opposite, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the meaning of life. And we value life and the importance of life and the importance of contributing. By looking at the, the death and talking today about the death of Muhammad, Rahimahullah, Tayyub Sukhtiani says, those who think that by, by the death of someone, of this great scholars that the sunnah it will die they deserve what Allah says in Surah Tawbah يُرِيدُونَ أَيْفَاهِمْ وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا يُتِمَّ نُورَهُ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ they want they distinguish Allah's light with their mouth but Allah will only allow his be perfected even uh, uh, to uh, uh, the you know, of the disbelievers Muhammad Sharif. Muhammad Sharif, there is with you quickly about him. And it's been a long, you know, uh, 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 talk. I was moved so many times by every one of the speakers before me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. One of the things that I, 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 I can tell you that I benefit a lot from in, in, in practice, in, in, in actions, uh, certain unique things that I want to share with you between Ihsan and perfections. I'm by nature a person who likes to perfect perfections, but I, I understand that there's a big difference between perfectionist and Ihsan. Much better, not only because it's the words that you use in the Quran and Sunnah, but the concept of Ihsan is so different to moving and accomplishing and come and sometimes perfectionists hold you back and not more. You know, perfectionists always hold you you back from taking risks while ihsan while doing that proper uh, 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 you know taking the proper the right calculation al ihsan in muhammad's life and the work that we work with him is one is specialties you know he loves to give every area he loves to go for us to go learn so for example Running. You do know how many courses that we have to take to take with the specialists from Harvard University, people who are specialized, for example, in casting. He wants the teacher to take a course in casting. You know how to tell the story, yeah, you know, and bring people and said, Hey, let's go hire someone from you know, California who knows how to tell a story, a storyteller, reading books about this, about the smallest area. He will say, Let's read this book. And together, and, and let's go over the the uh, having a focus group, seeking advice from people specialized in different areas. Very uh, unique, and that was one of the meaning of ihsan. He ihsan it means your mouth. Is, <laughs> what it is your mouth is? You know, he would never hold back to spend money that will create a professionalism, and it will elevate the level of. I remember one of the first flyers that we produced in Al-Mahdi. Do you know that the top paid like $500 for the designer to be the, the standard? Don't mind if that's worth it. If it is, if it means that you do things correct, you should. I remember when Al-Mahdi started, you know, it's not like these days when we, when we try to sure that we pay 
the instruction is not like about money, but when somebody do a service, you know, you know, uh, 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 basically we couldn't keep it up with the, with, with with the rate that's going on. I still remember in the beginning we care about we don't look look cheap when we book a flight. We look reasonable, you know. This things that every every speaker has joined us. We used to complain I, before I reach my destination. My whole day gone just because the they want to save twenty dollars. Well, a fifty hotel. How I personally many times have to check out from hotel that I was put on stations that it is with something you know I would never stay there you know do that you know asking a level of professionalism not only us as in, as, as down to every, every single volunteer the hospitality you know uh, uh, there is even a, a, a that culture transferred later on to many Muslim organizations that I see what we did 20 years ago 15 years later and eight years later adopted and picked by other oh, thinking about the smallest detail the smallest detail he will think about it show how the ihsan and how you know it is one of the thing that we used to do is just when before or even you think about your course you you put a frame like this throw an avatar of who who are your students you know put a sticky uh, figure that a somali sister a daisy kid you know an arab uncle you know and, uh, a mother or the child who, who are my clients so when i design my materials when i think about who are my audience are this is very different than what people in their information it's never was like that you know professionalism and i remember muhammad when we we talk about Al Maghrib, you know, we launched the course on Friday. D he, the way, guys, our competition on Friday are not the Friday Halak on the Master. And, 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 you know, one of the most prestige conferences in America, like ISNA conference, or, you know, these day, you know, in, in that time, uh, or uh, ICNA, these big organizations, yet before us. That's not, he said, this is not my competition. My competition in high school and college, not to go to the movie theater on Friday and to come to the class. We aim so high that we compete with Hollywood to make sure that, we, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a place where people will choose over going to the movie and compete with, you know. Um, it's not just about doing it. You see in Muhammad also very interesting things. I learned the difference between work and Islamic work, not as an entrepreneur, rather it's like a business. And that's very to say, and something is stuck in my head all the time. Entrepreneur is all about bottom line money, about money for us, how much money we save, we make. It's, an, it's a non-profit organization. You know, it goes to anyone's pocket, to his pocket, or he benefits zero from it. Or any one of us, you know, and I mean, as, as a profit. Entrepreneur is all about how much you make. Business is so important. So, so basically, it's even if we don't save that much money, but we benefited so many people, we are happy. And that's why when we run it as a, as a business, we want something fragile. It will keep sustainability and stability, and stability for the organization organization for generations to come running as a business you have an accounting and you are you hold yourself accountable for your actions CEO of a company or uh, and and we have that balance culture between both just think like entrepreneur it's about sucking and milking money from people regardless what you really get. but we don't have that culture we never turn down any Anyone because of the money. We always say, if a mother grow, everybody grow with it. You know, we never like that. It's about a, the company grow, but not the employee, not the one, especially in the lower level. We do, but we run it as a business. We don't do it in a way that tomorrow will be broke. That you see clearly his ability 
to, to balance and to differentiate between being in the same times and conservative and not, not being a strict or ultra conservative that it became a, 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 a hindrance for the growth. Let me talk about the issue of sisters. And I give this as an example. It's interesting. And in we are respecting the sisters. For example, we, we made the rule. You can't give your personal phone number to a sister. And the thing that you we tell the instructor the moment they start joining al maghrib one of the things muhammad used to say questions so make sure when they come you tell them please be behind that don't come from the sides to me be behind the desk there's no closeness like that don't pay attention to your private they want to talk to you and they will walk <laughs> i remember literally he stood between you and her it's still there is etiquette it need to be followed that thing that we, yes, we, I remember we attacked so badly in one of the country when we allowed room with no partitions. We believe Islamically that's acceptable. But in the same time, drop the rules. No. We care so much about the Hayat. We have a rule in the Maghrib that organization later on, even I apply this in my own master, which is if anyone married any one of our students immediately will be terminated his contract or her contract oh they're for looking for a second wife well the first wife well uh, 10 wife well whatever it is we don't do that and you basically you we we have very zero talent tolerance to culture but very interesting you know as much as muhammad is hip and al are hip and stuff like that but look muhammad in the beginning he used to have with all the Umara, a group, a group. They call each other for Salat al Fajr. No matter where they, 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 they used to call, call each other and to making sure, and he pair two together. Make sure he said, if we don't pray Fajr, impact people and bring them to Islam. If we ourselves are not practicing in the masjid, you know, fasting, reading Quran, is a person, he's about this. These never vanished just because he's also hip and model and cool. Muhammad also has this ability to be very in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sense that he brings new things. But he never was an innovative sense. Yani, that he is bringing new methods, new tools. But always he cares to make sure that it is halal. He call Is this allowed? What is the Islamic rule? And if we tell him that's not allowed, he made ideas. I said it's nice, but it's not allowed. I believe it's bid'ah. He drop it. He into a loophole, or you know what? Now, now, khalas, let it go. There is another thing. He also for that what is right and what is halal, what is haram. Look how some of his project, the Maghrib in itself. To travel to give knowledge to people where they are. This is a very new, you know. Not only that, to choose from the ilm what's suitable for people. Really, it's not we, our goal. Never was to bring to make a sheikh out of a mother. Our goal is to make a well-educated Muslim out of our class, a Muslim who loves his deen, proud of his, have built a resilience and balance, you know, and stability in his life through knowledge very unique i can tell you i taught in muslim countries i taught i was offered to in a university where he graduated from i turned it down and i said to the to the to the one who invited preferred to teach in al-maghrib i see more clarity and more impact and more benefit in medina also i believe there's better teacher in medina than me to teach the student in medina even the words that he choose the khutbah the khutbah but the khutbah that he a b c you know the the, the khutbah standard that he put and copied by thousands of people and instead of just teaching people you know workshop he put it a dua the the concept that he focused on in the last few years of his life there's so many new idea of it even the dua is a very, very well topic 
still he had a room to introduce new ideas. So it also line of Sunnah and Bidah. And I think one of the things that protected him, that he always survived more maybe information than him, knowledge than him, I don't want to say that word, it's kind of hard, hard from very heavy. You know, people, he, he can, they can put him in his place, check with them, it would not, you know, to be around someone like Abu Isa, someone like Wahid Bishyuni, he will give it to you in your face the way he did that, you know, and he loved that because he needed that, that in order growing and being able to invent new ways, new new methods without going into the air. Also, one thing I love about Muhammad, since we talk about this new techniques for marketing, sales, and all, all these areas, and, and making it, and and see, all these areas, he bring it, and he made it, okay, management as, as a servant for knowledge. You know what so many du'a do? They got it wrong. Technique for sales and management and NLPs and all this kind of stuff. Muhammad made these tools to serve knowledge, while so many others made knowledge tools. So they, they will come to a management principle, then they will yeah, to serve that management principle or sales like that. Muhammad believed in Sharia as the, the, the ultimate highest authority and power, whatever tools and knowledge that exist outside to serve these goals. That's a big difference. I think that's something very unique about him. Also, like, and I'm saying this is not about him, it's about us. So benefit, to copy this based on your ability, whoever listening to me tonight or today. You know, Muhammad has no hizbiyya, has no hidden agenda. He doesn't belong to any group or cult or, or or ideologies. The only thing that he belonged to is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, and 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 very clear about that. You know, but your face and 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 all going out there to have a debate over over single issues. No, he does not belong to any one of these groups or or, or ideas or or. Zab or one of in the field or anything like that. That's why when he when we, Maghrib comes to any city, we part of any particular da'wah group or associate with ourselves with a particular da'wah. We see ourselves as an educator. We're not coming to compete in the da'wah field with respect everybody and we'll give advice to everybody. We will we will work with anyone who that we believe. It's correct, and we excuse ourselves from the area that we don't agree with. And I love something about you, Muhammad, rahimahullah. And this is from inside of al-Maghrib, as the leader of al-Maghrib, to show you how clear, clear how the clarity of Muhammad. He 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 told he told me or the shura or the board of al-Maghrib. He said, "Walid, we have." culture and in, in anything it's called lobbying so for example if i have an idea i want to introduce to a mother go and to sheikh yasub just in the night talk to him in the phone about it and make sure that he's with the meeting i have sheikh yasub we are just vote and a secure the nur to you know to have come like that we just are you, are you, are you, are you able to hear him i can't Sorry, so sorry, Shaykh, it's popping really badly, popping and I need to let it continue. Okay. Let it continue. Oh, uh, 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 gonna, if you can't hear me, gonna, there's no point. Uh, well, I wanted to, I wanted to I'm gonna call I'm gonna you on call WhatsApp. WhatsApp. We're going to do the demand for that. Where to start from? So. So, so can I call? Uh, I'm going to okay, call you. Sorry, you guys, give me a second. I know we we're trying to bear with it. Um, I didn't want to interrupt him. I thought maybe, just maybe, it would get better. Give me a second.
So you guys, we have a backup plan for our backup plan, alhamdulillah. So I'm going to hold up uh, the phone. Sheikh Walid is with me here on video, and he's going to do the dua. And you guys can see him. Here we go, Sheikh. You're on, alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, before just making the dua, I, I want to conclude with what I was saying earlier. Um, I, I want you to know this. Even Muhammad Sheikh, it was said, and he's a very introverted person. But yet he, he pushed himself to be a team player, to, to be a teacher, always smiling, uh, talking to people. Muhammad Sharif loved food, by the way. And he used to respect food, not only love food, he respect food. And that's something I, I, I like about him. You know, I remember he at one time he said, I'm not going to eat meat. I'm just going to eat uh, vegetarian. But obviously he couldn't hold it up for a long, uh, he gave up quickly. Um, <laughs> Vacations means a lot to him. He used to go out a lot, be by himself or with people, calling people to travel with. It means a lot for him to spend a good time, you know, and to travel new areas, to try new things. Very adventurous person, Rahimahullah. Put some time for himself alone with friends and family as well. Uh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf said earlier about his wife. He told me several times, my wife is my anchor in my life. No matter how it goes, she always brings me back. You know, so, so that's something very uh, interesting. Have very high self-esteem. Trust himself so much. Uh, and, and that's why oh, there is always conflict. And he's a big dreamer. And that's why, if you ever wonder, if there's two people or people like uh, clash kind of uh, and, and challenge each other, will be Muhammad Sharif and Abu Isa. You know, then comes me and Yasal Qadi sometimes. You know, why? Because... Uh, we also have a lot of high self-esteem. <laughs> we like our opinion a little bit uh, 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 as well. So we kind of challenge each other all, all, uh, a lot of time. Also, he's a big dreamer. We're by nature, me and Boi Sasha, he has a very practical people. And, and I, I always did myself, with all the trouble that we give him, why he kept us, why he's always with us, because I know that he benefited from this as much as we benefit from it as well. He's a simple person, you know. Um, I, I will end with the, uh, uh, or before uh, two points quickly, but I will end with this uh, uh, story. We were once in, a, in, a, in, a, in Canada, and it was extremely cold to show you how confident he is. <laughs> so it's extremely cold outside, and, and uh, he said, hey, let's finish this discussion in the jacuzzi, big jacuzzi outside. But it's kind of far from the house, so you have to walk to it. I said, Muhammad, you know, I live in Saudi Arabia, then I moved to Texas, so it's almost the same, I feel like home. But I don't know about you guys, this is minus 30, that's crazy. I'm not going to get into the water, then walk outside from the water with a wet clothes on me, you know, in minus 30. Uh -uh, I'm not Canadian, you know, uh, I'm not going to do that. He said, oh, Sheikh Ali, don't worry. When you get in, the temperature of your body will be so high. By the time you walk back to the house, it, it will not drop right away. So you will keep the warmth and will not feel the cold. I said, okay. We go, we finish our discussions, blah, blah, blah. Had a good time. And by the time I'm leaving, you know, I tell him, so, mashallah, you, you have experience with that. And, you know, you always guys do that. He said, no, this is my first time. <laughs> I said, excuse me. He said, that's my first time. I said, you just told me all this whole thing about body temperature stuff. He said, oh, that's my theory. I said, well, lie, if that didn't work, <laughs> you're in big trouble tonight. So, and, and we laugh about it. And he was correct. But the way the confidence that he has, I thought he's been doing this all the time. You know, it was said simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Muhammad doesn't have these like crazy complicated ideas. If you look at all his ideas are simple. But simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, you know? Yani, um, anyway, uh, there, there is a lot to be said, uh, Rahimahullah. Um, Muhammad, there's no doubt in my heart before that this acceptance that you see is a result of a lot of hidden things that nobody knows about. A good thing that he'd done, Allah only knows about, and few people. And that's one of the secrets for Allah. In or if you have hidden things are so good, Allah make your appearance and your reputation so good in return. 
You did something away from people, Allah give you the reward of the opposite, make you so well known, especially after your death. And as Sheikh Yasser Burjah is telling us, and Sheikh, you know, uh, uh, Muhammad Faqih, and many coming up with the stories, his father telling that he used to go in 30 minutes or 40 minutes before Adhan al-Fajr, when it's minus 30, minus 20, and to shovel with the shovels to remove the snow from the entrance of the masjid so people can walk into the masjid. And nobody knows who did that. You know, these small things that you do in secret between you and Allah alone, the result of it is something tremendous in the dunya and in the akhla. And we hear all these things coming up right now. Somebody traveling, Shah Muhammad Faqih, yeah, I'm not going to go into exact. There is another time we should spend more about these stories. But the point is, that's something you learn and something you should care for. With all been said, I don't want you to think of Muhammad as an ideal person. Muhammad has his faults, has shortcomings. I uh, rob people in the wrong in the wrong way sometimes. We disagree with each other. We agree with each other. I don't want you to be like thinking that he's like an ideal because if you think this way, you're going to feel I can't be like him. You can be like him and better. And also, if you think of somebody like perfect and you know about something that maybe it's not correct, you will be like either you will just ignore that you follow the mistakes or the whole person collapse just because you've seen one or two mistakes. We should be balanced. That's why I didn't like when someone, like it is Islamically, from a theological perspective, we should not. There's some statement been made about Muhammad in Jannah, Muhammad yani, in the, uh, uh, walking into the Jannah, the angels giving him the glad tidings of entering Jannah. That's wrong. That should not be said that. We should say, inshallah, that's what we wish. That I know some people might hear it the wrong way, but that's not the point. 100% I can guarantee you. The point is that what we hope for him, we wish for him that he will be like that. And in ulama rahimahullah, very clear about that you don't make a judgment for an, a certain individual by his name that he's in Jannah. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just because Uthman ibn Mab'oon, when Umm al uh, she said, يعني, he is, uh, she made a comment about him that he is in paradise or something like good for him. He said, I, I don't know what will be done to me. If Muhammad said, say, I cannot say that's about me. Yes, antum shuhada'ullahi fi ardi. You are Allah's witness on earth. So when it's good, it's good. So would we say, you know, we are hoping and we expect nothing less than Jannah, inshallah, for someone that so many people testify for him that he's a righteous, good person. But always with that help, so we don't cross the line. It's, it's important to keep that uh, 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 balance. Finally, when Muhammad told me to join al Maghrib, I said, why? He said, Sheikh, I want to, I'm building something that it will bring Ajr to me while I'm in my grave. And I want the same for you. And I can tell you, Muhammad wants the same for everyone who listening to me now. Maghrib or, or, or any one of his projects. That was his main thing. You might hear Muhammad Sharif was not involved in Maghrib mm -hmm. in management. Now, by the way, Muhammad Sharif involved in Maghrib to the last day of his life, to the last week of his life. He's always there. He's always consulting. We always consult with him, talk to him. Our administrator always in contact. Never turn his back to the organization. He believed in the leadership of it, but he still was very much involved. And, and Muhammad, Allah, this is one of his dreams. That's why I say to everyone who's hearing me today, if you've been volunteering with the Maghrib, go back and volunteer. If you've been taking a role, it doesn't mean to be the same role, another role, bigger role to play. Been supporting the Maghrib, continue to do that, because that's what his Salaf Ajani, as Sheikh Ammar said, you know, Hey, make sure that is really the best thing that we can do to this person personally, besides also learning from his legacy, from his character, and carry that with us uh, uh, in our life. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Finally, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his names and attributes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Muhammad al-Sharif.
and elevate his station among those who are guided. Send him along the path of those who came before and forgive us and him. Oh Allah, the good, the, 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 the Lord of the world. I ask you to enlarge for him his grave and shed light upon him in it. Oh Allah, forgive him and strengthen him. Oh Allah, forgive him and have mercy upon him. Excuse him and pur purda, pardon him. Oh Allah, make honorable his reception. Expand his entry and clean him with water and snow and ice. Purify him the same way the garment, the white garment, is purified from any stains or fault. Ya Allah, we ask you to admit him to the gardens, to the Firdaus al-A'la. Protect him from the punishment of the grave and the torment of the hellfire. Ya Allah, we ask you for Muhammad al-Sharif, that your servant and the son of your servants is to forgive him and his parents and to give strength to his parents and his family and to gather them with him and all of us in Jannat al-Naim. Oh Allah, he is with you right now. So Ya Allah, forgive whatever shortcoming that happened from him against you. And be his guarantor, be the one who defend him. Be the one who will give back on his behalf for anyone that he have wronged in this dunya. Tahammal anh ma baynahu wa bayna nas. Waghfir lahu ma baynahu wa baynak ya hayu ya qayyum. Ya Allah, Muhammad now is under your mercy. So protect him. Take good care of him. Elevate his status. Shower him with his with your mercy. Ya Allah, he needs your mercy now more than ever, and your forgiveness now more than ever. Are you generosity more than ever? So forgive him and elevate his level in Jannat al Naim. Ya Allah, in the day of judgment, give him strength and tabat and make his skills of good deeds heavy and the skills of the bad deeds light. O Allah, protect him from hellfire that he enter Jannah without being touched by the hellfire. O Allah, we ask you, Ya Hayya Qayyum, to make his affairs from now on going easy and his path to Jannah easy and to make it easy for us in this dunya upon our death and upon our resurrection. O Allah, we ask you by your names and attributes to uh, 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 I mean, get uh, or shower him with your uh, 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 mercy and do not torment him or, or punish him. And Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Hayya Qayyum, that you treat him according to your standards of mercy and love and forgiveness, not according to his deeds, as your mercy is way more bigger uh, than anything. Ya Allah. يمن كتابه ويسر حسابه وثقل ميزانه وثبت قدمه وأسكنه في على الجنة بجوار نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم ارحمه ولا تعذبه وثبت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اجعله في ظل عرشك يوم يبعث الناس اللهم يا حي يا قيوم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام زده سرورا على سرور وبياضا في وجهه ونورا في قلبه وفي جو في قبره يا حي يا قيوم اكتبه في الصالحين والصديقين والشهداء اجعله عندك في منازل الصابرين وجهه جزاء الشاكرين اللهم يا حي يا قيوم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتنا بعده يا الله do not prevent us from getting the reward of him and everything that he was involved in and we have the opportunity to be part of it and do not cause us to go astray after him. Allahumma ya hayya qayyum. Again, give your strength and your patience and mercy 
to his family, to his children, make them righteous, and gather them with us in Jannat al Naim. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Walid. Um, so alhamdulillah, that brings us to the conclusion of our program. Um, Jazakallah khair for being here with us, sharing these memories, um, and alhamdulillah, most importantly, taking part in the dua with us. And I said this earlier, and I want to reassure everyone again, the legacy that Sheikh Muhammad built, alhamdulillah, the institutions that he built, they continue. We continue, inshallah, stronger and honoring his legacy, the vision that he had, connecting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that work will never stop. And so stay tuned, inshallah, um, and we are going to honor him in the best ways possible and tread ahead. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you, give you patience and strength. You'll hear from all of us at Al-Maghrib and discover you very soon. Jazakallah khair, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>